How are we looking, everybody? Can you see me? Am I moving? Am I doing? Let's move this down here. So everything's working okay? Okay, great. Awesome. Just a little bit of a hiccup there. That's all. I'm still getting used to this. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to figure it out at some point. Let me move my camera up. So it doesn't look like I'm always looking. We can see clearly now. The rain is gone. How's that? So it kind of looks like I'm looking at the camera or the screen, I guess. That's better. Kind of look like I'm sitting down, though. I don't know, like I'm real small. I bet. <laughs> It's not too bad. It's like I was able to get the uh, overlay here for the chat so people can see it. I hope that's cool. Seems like it's a little bit more professional to have that. I got my Locutus of Borg up there for people to see. I'm going to put somebody in timeout. I've got a bunch of uh, stuff I can mess with here. Looking all around. Oh man, three amigos, great flick. Okay. All right, zero theory. What is it you want to talk about for role-playing games? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. Just came back from a wedding, didn't we there, Roblox Girls? My favorite dice system? Oof, man, that's a tough one. Um, I really like the simplicity of D6, like Star Wars D6. Um, some of the, I think the second edition of the game kind of a little bit complicated with the dice, but um, I mean, you just roll D6s and total it up. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you add in the wild die to it, it gets a little bit more chaotic. But yeah, yeah, definitely the West End Games uh, version of it. Um, I mean, D20's always tried and true. Uh, I like percentile dice, too. That's pretty easy. So I don't know if I've got a favorite. I mean, D20's like, you know, it's like a, it's so comfortable. It's so familiar. I'm not sure if that's my favorite, but it's just, something you can easily go back into so it makes it obviously very enjoyable um i don't know i had a lot of fun with d6 that's uh, just because it didn't it, i didn't have to, i knew what the dice were all you have to do is roll them and total them up so that or percentile because you're not rolling that many dice you're just rolling two dice maybe a different die for damage or whatever if the system has it but uh yeah i would uh it's not d20 something it's probably a d6 system what about yours? What's your favorite dice system? I'm also trying not to burp all over the place whenever I do one of these. Let me see. I get my 
get my fall out and I fall my vault boy in there and my little Buddha always moves around but right now I'm liking the successes is counting the successes system yeah so like shadow run vampire it's fun it's fun to roll a lot of dice doesn't matter which one it is um, it's a little bit more complicated for some people uh, but no you can have a lot of fun and I was gonna say maybe that I enjoyed the vampire system for back in the old days you know d10s and whatnot counting up your successes it's very easy to get you know to just yeah definitely Shadowrun gets uh gets nutty when we tried we played third edition and some people just didn't enjoy the system at all so and that's a shame but um I think it's a system because you do have to get in combat a lot where vampire you don't have to get in combat a whole bunch where you shouldn't I guess you don't have to really do the combat you know and, and figure out all the weirdness but uh, with Shadowrun it's like there's so much combat that having to deal with those dice and successes and taking it away yeah it definitely hurts some and then I've got some people that just you know they, they're not used to playing new new systems or really getting jazzed into it but um, it's fine. I mean, it doesn't work for everybody. But uh, obviously, rolling d6s and counting successes is pretty good. I mean, it's always fun to roll a whole bunch of dice, too, if that's the uh, the case. <laughs> that's my little girl right there. She uh, She's just watching, seeing what's going on with me. So I'm going to introduce her to... Uh, I'm going to introduce her to some role-playing games very soon. Yeah, that's my little girl. So, uh, she's going to be introduced to it with her sister once her sister probably turns eight here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to introduce them to my pocket fantasy game. I'm also going to show them a game called this Lost in the Fantasy World right here. It's, uh, whoops, let me put it over here since it's not in the thing. So, Lost in the Fantasy World would probably be a good game to show them as well. Um, so I'll probably do this in my game. Oh, hey, dude. I'm going to be doing that video um, sometime here in the um, in the near future. Because, I like, the other day I just did a, uh, a PDF video. I mean, I've got the book, but the PDF was actually better. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you right now my... Uh, this is my future... Well, not that one. Hold on. I got some stuff in here I've already done videos on. Uh, cyborg can go away. This can go away. So I've got some OSR stuff, some weird. So that's what is on the docket, and I'm gonna try to get yours in there. And I could do that. I'm trying to ramp up pretty big and put out a lot of content uh, as fast as I can uh, through reading this stuff. But I checked out your game, and uh, obviously, um, I know that you got the. The successes, so I saw how that is in your game. I like what I saw, too, honestly. I mean, a lot of that book is the system, but um, I really like, I really dig the vibe. It kind of reminds me of The Road or something like that. But no, Cyborg is awesome. Do you got it yet? You got this? I have two drinks here. How did I bring that in here? Jesus. Mine's going crap. How's the uh, how's the dark been for you? I mean, like promoting it, selling it. Like, how has that been? I, mean, I know you've got some really some people that really love it. You know, the reviews wise. I don't know. Why I brought two drinks in. I got both of them. I just didn't put the other one in the fridge. I guess who knows? I mean, that's. Well, I'm gonna go through it. You know, uh, I, that's one thing that you know I can say is you know I I read about seventy five percent of the stuff that I uh, oh yeah could be. It's always difficult to deal with balance. Am I not? Am I sounding pretty loud or is it okay? I want to make sure I'm not too loud. Okay. 
yeah, I got this uh, Yeti mini Yeti uh, blue blue Yeti thing, and uh, the sound quality is great. I just uh, I can see my audio is like spiking sometimes. I'm like I don't know what's going on with that, but um, but I'll, I'll you know like I said I look through it and uh, man I'll I'll do the video. It'll probably be within the next month, honestly. So maybe in the next couple weeks I can slide it in wherever I want because I've already read a good bit of it. Hey, what's going on? Got another person. We're, we're we're starting to rock. We got we got three other three people. Always including myself in that. Okay. It just disappeared. There we go. My water bottle makes a lot of weird sound. Right there. Speaking of the artiste, somebody you know, I take it. Do y'all like having the chat on the screen too? I'm still trying to figure this out. Oh, awesome. Well, very cool. It's always great to have artist input and stuff. Oh, okay. Awesome. Working together. That's that's great. Yeah, I was I was wanting to get the because what happens is when you do a live stream and then you have to wait for the live chat replay to show up on your video. So that's a little crap. Does it look like I'm lagging my mouth and stuff when I'm talking? I'm afraid I've got too much stuff going on. My computer might be crashing on me. Doesn't look like I'm lagging. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, great. I'm just, you can never tell. I mean, there's a, I was very surprised at how much it takes to, to do this stream. And I'm, I was, uh, I was shocked, honestly. These people that do like all the graphics and stuff on their stuff on their screen. I mean, maybe I can get there at some point, but uh, yeah, it's difficult and it's you know it's time consuming and frustrating. I had some frustration with this, but it was my mistake. But it is what it is. So, so what's the future um, for this dark game? I mean, what what have you know? Has it have you ran it much? Like, what's the history? What games have you played? What were you inspired by? Stuff like that. I can break it. Let me. I might. Let me see. I might be able to. And let me let me do something real real quick and see if I can get something going here. I might be messing myself up here. Let's see what I can do. Well, maybe I shouldn't do that. I might mess it all up. I was going to try to throw it up on the screen, but I don't know if my skills are available for that right now. So what's wrong with the insanities, you think? It would be really great if YouTube had in their streams where you can allow people to talk. You know, I guess if you went on Discord. Because I'm certain it would be better for you just to be able to speak instead of typing. And so you could just click and say, hey, you know... I'll allow this person to say something. Oh, great. Get the whole family keyed in. <laughs> Needing all the help I can get. I just really enjoyed it. I did this the other night, and uh, man, it was fun. People were talking to me. We were talking about movies, talking about video games, role-playing games. I was like, oh, this is great. I want them to be more supernatural feeling, so they aren't so close to real life. Yeah, that's, that's got to be a balance. We, um... We were working on Weird Frontiers, the game that I worked on with my buddy David, and um, we were at first going to do like a bunch of like sanity issues, and we just realized that like that might not be like the best thing to do, and uh, like it might not be the most sensitive thing, I guess I should say, you know. And plus, like, I don't know. I mean, we're not really for that type of stuff, but we realized that it was going to be a huge headache. And um, it's best just to let let the the game master come up with that, like whatever problem they think that you know, or whatever issue might come from you losing your mind, seeing some terrible, horrible creature. Because um, we were gonna do like every single like thing you could get, like phobias, and this is what happens, and oh, it was gonna be another 
bloated thing. I don't know if you've seen that book. Um, I'll show it to you here. Have you seen Weird Frontiers role-playing game? I rolled ticks and what... For example, in playtesting, I rolled ticks and what was going through my mind if you were if you were playing at a table with someone with actual ticks, it would be a bad situation. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not all for that, but it's just when you actually have to sit down and do it, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I feel good about this. I'll show this off. I don't know if you've seen my other videos of it, but I mean, look at that. Look at the size of that monster. She left. That's okay. It's understandable. But yeah, you can see. So it, it already was like 900 pages and like we didn't want any more stuff in there. Yeah, it's a beast, man. It's actually got the uh, stats are actually written up for the book in the game in case you want to use it as a weapon. So, you know, just kind of a tongue in cheek type thing. I remember Call of Cthulhu, um, Call of Cthulhu 5th edition. Yeah, yeah, babe. It does. It's, yeah, 900 pages. It had, um, yeah, definitely D12. That'll do, definitely, they'll do what you need to do. Throw that at somebody. But they had a card game called Mythos. Chaosium did for Call of Cthulhu. And in the in that card game, they had one of the, the Cthulhu Mythos tomes was the role-playing game on the card. So I think it's kind of like a little homage to that, but, um, so what 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 I mean? What's your background like? What would you start playing? Um, I don't know how old you are, so you know that's one of the things about role playing too. Now is that you know we've got kind of these generations that is, are different. Um, and I plan on doing some interviews too. I've got an interview I'm going to be doing uh, this month. Oh, you're so you're like me. I'm 45. So uh, if you're ever interested in doing something like that, an interview. Uh, We'll just do it over Zoom, but it's up to you if you're up to uh, talking and putting your face out there. Um, I don't really care. Started with Marvel Fast Rip System and AD&D 2nd Edition. You know it, buddy. Look at this right here. Here's my pride and joy. Kaboom. See if you can see it. That whole, that whole bookcase is nothing but 2nd Edition, except for the very top. Very top. Whoa. That didn't go well. Let's see. Up there's some Star Wars D6. Let's bring it back and get this thing fixed as I just botched that. That'll work for now. Oh, dude. Second edition. That's what I started with. Um, can't remember exactly what age I was. Uh, oh yeah, the handbooks. Handbooks are, you know, when, I, when we first started playing, it was we just had player's handbook, DM's guide. Uh, oh yeah, monster manual, and I like rangers. So later on, I got the ranger handbook, and that's all we used. I mean, I had a couple of their buddies that really played the heck out of it and got you know they bought a bunch of it, uh, but I never did. I, I all that stuff you see there, I've picked up within the last fifteen years, I would say. And eBay, Google Plus when it was available. And uh, I love second edition. I used to have some beeps with it, and I was completely wrong about the edition. Um, yeah, that's that, all that stuff there. Like, other than the stuff that I already had. Yeah, uh, no, I don't have the drum. Uh, no, maybe I do. Let me look. Hold on. Let me take a look. I think I got it. Some of them, um, I'm not sure. I'm not 100 percent sure about that one, but they, um, you know, they did some print on demand on drive on draft RPG. So I was able to pick up some that uh, I wasn't able to find, where it was just easier just to get them. But like, um, I'm gonna probably do some some second edition videos down the road. I just did. I've got so much. I was like, man, I could really flood my channel with that. And I don't know if anybody wants to see all that stuff. But uh, but it was just I, what happened was I had tons of OSR games. Some of the videos, a lot of the videos I did, those products, um, I just had too much of it. And they were it's all my own stuff that I bought. And I was like, ah, what am I doing with this? I should have been buying second edition, the edition that started it all for me uh, years ago. And so I sold about $1,000 worth of 
of books, different role playing books, games, and I just went on a mad hunt on Amazon, eBay, Google Plus, stores that are around here where I am, anything I could find, I bought. And of course, print on demand stuff. I never played the Marvel game. I do have this though, and I picked this up fairly recently, last couple years. And I haven't done a video about it, but DC Heroes. Would you sell them again if you would do it again? What do you mean? Like when I sell all this old stuff? Uh, like sell, sell all my... Yeah, I definitely would. Unless you're talking about selling like all my old books. I've got a lot of them on... Uh, i got a lot of them on PDF. And they just don't... I mean, they're good books, but they just don't mean to... No, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Um, I would, Actually, some of the stuff I regret because it actually went up in price like drastically some of the books I had kind of the newer OSR books that they only made like one printed of like uh, veins of the earth and stuff like that. But, um, but no, because I switched it out, uh, for the edition that started it all. Cause there was a time where I pretty much told people, look, you know, go play the game that got you into this hobby and, uh, you know, enjoy it. Oh yeah. So, well, some of them are definitely, uh, they're damaged. They're old, you know. So, I mean, they're... Yeah, yeah, DC Heroes, I've read a good bit of it, and I was just, like, amazed by it. I was like, wow, I wish I'd played this back in the day. But I've never been a big comic book person. Um, but what I wanted was, I like getting kind of, I would say, the best or critically acclaimed games from all sorts of different genres. So, of course, you know, when it came to comic books, um, I would, I was like... Oh, let me go look and see what people think about the, you know what's the best comic book game or what's the best space game or post apocalyptic game or whatever horror game. And I was like, I'm gonna get like what people believe is the best. It doesn't matter what edition. And it was like with Shadowrun. Like I, a lot of people say, because I'm a grognard and I like old games, it was third edition Shadowrun. A lot of people said that was their best. So I was like, well, I'll go for it. Not read a lot of comics, but I'm certainly a fan of superheroes. Yeah, that's kind of like me. I mean, I am. I'm. I'm pretty much completely tired of. The superhero movies um in all respects just absolutely just swamped with them um but uh i don't know i mean i had a couple spider-mans i play a lot of the superhero systems marvel dc champions yeah i mean they're really beloved i've talked to a lot of people that they've just spent tons of time my buddy dave he played a lot of the marvel the marvel game um i've got some pds for that but i, I just when i when i read dc heroes and i found a good auction on ebay and uh, I picked it up, and I want to say that box right there was maybe forty bucks or sixty bucks. I couldn't believe it. I was, uh, I read it, and I was like, "Wow, this is really smart." Because actually, what got into what me what got into me, hold its own, its own over time. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, it's always good whenever a game can last a long time. Um, that game Ascendant came out, uh, and it was a. Uh, a superhero game and it kind of ex talked about DC Heroes about how it did its system with it being a physics based system. And I didn't really understand the different systems, different types of systems within um, within superhero games. And so I looked into it and I was like, well, that's really neat. I knew this whole thing, Zero was getting me into it. It's a lot of fun. I had no idea. Jeez, would be so funny. Um, that's cool. What games have you played? I'm always interested in seeing like how people get into the have gotten into the hobby. What game they played? Merkboard, great. Is that the first game? Because I've had people like that played like an adventure I created for like Mutant Epoch, and, it, and they told me that. That was the first time ever playing role playing games, and I was like, "Whoa, that's huge! Thank you for letting me be the one to uh, start you in on that." Oh, great! Yeah, I love uh, some body horror stuff. <laughs> it might work something else, man. I mean, I think a lot of people foo food it because of its art style. Uh, do you have Cyborg? Did you pick it up? Um, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, I'm back at it, and I'm learning a little bit more. Had a little bit of trouble starting this thing off, but um, 
I got the, I wanted to get the chat on the screen. Yeah, Cyborg's beautiful. I was really impressed with it. And um, like I said, I think that the the layout and stuff, even though it's, some of the fonts are difficult, a lot of people don't like the fonts. And I understand. I have a lot of problems with it too, as it's a bit much. But I just think his layout, he's getting even better. He's even better than Merc Borg in that sense. So, um, Y'all playing face-to-face -face with some people? It's always different to play online, like Roll20 or something. Um, compared to face to face. Oh, okay, cool. I'm not, I'm not playing on that. I've got tabletop simulator, but I've never played. I've played some board game type stuff. I've got um. So I did that video on that adventure. I've also got this: too fast to live, too young to die. That's another thing for Cyborg, and I'll probably be doing a video on that. I just don't want to slam too much of the same stuff on people, even though Cyborg's very hot right now. And of course, it would it would be great to be able to show people stuff that everybody's really interested in. But this is all about vehicles, crashes, um, modding cars, a bunch of different cars in it. Looks fantastic. So it, I mean, there's people out there that are putting out products, third party products that haven't they can't really capture the aesthetic of the real thing. Um, and then there's some people that really understand what it's about. So I'll probably be doing a video about this. I'll definitely be doing a video about this too. Once I figure out how to read it. That's the thing about Cyborg. You have to like figure out how to read it. You have to look at it and be like, oh, okay. That's, I thought that was just something art wise, but it was actually showing me something interesting. Any other games that you've played? I mean, you obviously have played a lot. If you're, uh, you know, if, and I was looking at Merkborg earlier, unfortunately. I think I'm the only one in my friend circles who's really interested in it. It's too serious and dark for most of my group. Well, I've talked to people who said that it fails in what it's trying to be, this, like, death metal game. Uh, the rules really aren't there for that. Um, it's the cool thing about the world dying is interesting. Hey, what's up? Yeah, it's, um, here, I'll show it to you. It's pretty much Cyborg. It's it's like Cyberpunk Merkborg is what it is. Uh, the whole thing about the world dying is pretty cool, but you can, I mean, of course, some of the adventures that have been made or dungeon crawls are obviously pretty dark, but you could play it however you want. I mean, the system is pretty, pretty set. But no, this is a beautiful book. I would highly tell you to check this one out. Um, once you can get, I think it's available now. But um, I did a video on it, if you want to check it out, when I did an actual flip through um, of this whole thing. And uh, yeah, it's a real beauty. What's funny is that they put this sticker on the back. I don't know if y'all know about this. And I didn't I didn't know about it at, until after I did my video. They put this sticker on the back, which it wasn't supposed to have. It was supposed to have plastic, and then the sticker would be on the plastic. So some people try to pull this off, and it messed up their book. So if that happens, people are putting other stickers on there, kind of like, you know, whatever. Something crazy or wild. But it actually has a cool kind of aesthetic for the whole corporate, like, buy this book type aesthetic of Cyborg. But I'm a big fan of it. Uh, there is some couple interesting things that it has in it, like the hacking uh, is pretty neat. Um, and I, it, cy, cy, uh, like Cyberpunk games are either way too complicated... It seems most of them are way too complicated because there's a lot of stuff going on. You got technology, you got cybernetics, you got, you know, who knows what. You've got body modifications, and then people try to add in there some magic and stuff like that, and then you got the hacking. So it's a way, maybe I think, to be able to to role play cyberpunk, get the experience of role playing cyberpunk in an easier to digest system. Oh, you were able to, it was able to get off, huh? Yeah, take a look at that video. See what you think. There's some other videos out there. Some of them, of course, are just the PDF. Looking through the PDF, and for me with the Merc Borg. I was I didn't do my first one um, with the books I didn't have it at the time, but I was like I'm waiting until I get the actual book and it's not even my book it's my buddy's book. Um, yeah, I'm not sure it's got that you know what I'm talking about it's got that same Merkborg uh, mush feeling you know like that that kind of softish thing it might mess up the finish to it. Uh, it's not my book so I'm not messing with it. But some people were saying you're real careful. I guess like Zero Theory said you know care very carefully you'll be able to, you'll be able to get it off. So do y'all like um, the chat being on the screen like that? Just let me know. Like I said, I'm just trying to... Uh, 
it was another one of those things where I was like, well, I'd like to have it on there just in case. Um, cause people don't, you know, when you fire it up, you see like live chat, you have to click on it and it shows up over there. Uh, I'd like to do some graphics, but honestly, it's a lot of work and I like showing off my books. So, okay, cool. So the OSR Edgelord, I've seen, you've posted some other stuff before, right? Or you show up in some other streams, maybe I've seen your name before. Or am I, am I, am I crazy? Which it could be. I can't really tell anymore sometimes with what's, what I've seen. Of course I do. I spend a lot of money on them and they look beautiful. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I've been, I've been trying to, just to be able to be involved a little bit more. I've been going on some more streams and I see, uh, that people have and just try to, you know, talk and have some sort of presence with them. But, um, I don't know what they're going to do after Cyborg. I mean, of course, there's tons of other genres, but it was a completely different guy who wrote Cyborg, and he did a really bang-up job. I was able to talk to him on Discord, so that was pretty cool. You know, tell him what a good job he did. Let him know about the video that I did, too, if you want to spread that around. So, I'm over a 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. It took years and years and years, but granted, I haven't really worked on it that much. But now I've got to get 4,000 viewer hours, so it's like, ugh. But I've wanted to do this. It's just one of those things between putting the effort in to learn how to do it and not. Oh, that's cool. I watched a video of yours a while ago about cutting off. Well, man, um, Pirate Borg. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I've got Orc, Orc Borg. I did a video about that. That's pretty neat. I mean, you're going to have your offshoots. Yeah, man, I, uh, some of the videos are now are old. I mean, my channel is ancient. You know, I had, I've done it on just a crappy little Logitech webcam and then like a Chromebook. And I finally got a, uh, a phone, like an, I, I do my videos on an iPhone pretty much, unless I'm doing them here, which I haven't done this in a while because a lot of people, I, it's a lot of work to just show up some PDFs, just pictures of them. Um, but I wanted to show people the actual physical book and it was difficult me holding it up. Plus I actually had people talk trash about just seeing me. They want to see the book. They don't want to see my, I think the phrase was my fat face on the screen. So I was like, all right, well, I'll see what I can do. Um, but no, man, sometimes you, oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. The Hyperborea videos, those were big for me. The biggest one for me was Bear Amaze because Greg Gillespie, who wrote it, he put it on the title page for Bear Amaze on Draft RPG, which is of course a huge hit. And that generated tons of hits for me. But, um, well, that's good. I'm glad that, that video helped you, man. Like, like I said, dude, I've had, I've had ups and downs. I've had people that I thought were, were gonna play games and enjoy them, and they they were nerds like me. So, and they just didn't pull their weight really, and I and it was like I've got to get away from these people. They're just dragging me down, and um, I've got to go try to find the people that want to play the games I want to play. And that was the biggest and best decision I ever made. Is go find those people. I feel like I'm the only real way to play a game and get a serious atmosphere. Like what Ertboard tries to do is to play it solo. I noticed that most of the uh, comedy comes from the players player group. Yeah, yeah. Solo has gotten big, especially with COVID and stuff. A lot more people doing solo. You know, you can see a lot of games on there. Um, it's a definitely uh, my my games Pocket Fantasy. I found out or is a huge hit with solo because uh, it has a it has defense roles. So if as long as you can put in some sort of role that you can roll against yourself and like Merkborg is player facing um and i made the starship combat in my new pocket space which will probably be out monday i'm thinking i'm hoping um i made that player facing because i was like it's easy and, and it's fun to let that's one thing about like about Merkborg. it was one of the first times i played a fair a player facing game and i like the fact that i wasn't rolling any dice if they were rolling bad that was on them if they were getting killed that was on them i didn't feel bad I was like, sorry, buddy, you got bad rolls on hitting and bad rolls on not getting hit. So good luck. So it's a neat game. It's and, and I think one of the things with this industry and playing these games is that a lot of people, they get. Um, oh, cool. Thank you for uh, checking it out. Um, it's amazing how well that game's blown up. OK. Um, Oh, it did? Yeah. Some people in my first game, they were like, 
Ooh, what's going on? I was like, I don't know what to tell you. These are your rolls, pal. They're not mine. Well, that's the thing. You're making twice as many rolls. So dice either come and go. That's going to be up to you, you know? Um, but uh, I don't know what I was talking about. My brain just went zoom. Uh, yeah, player face. Oh, what I was saying is like, a lot of people are just like, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that. And I can just play whatever. Like, I can play a game that's real crunchy as long as everybody else is into it. If I'm going to be the one crunching and nobody else is, then I'm, you're wasting my time. If I'm running it or I'm playing it. Um, or I can play a game that's very lightweight. You know, I mean, I make I made a game that's lightweight and I can play lightweight games. The games you don't really have to have a bunch of effort to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's weird how people are just like, I like this and only this. And I'm like, well, it's all about the same stuff, right? You're going, you've got a character, they do something cool, you kick something's ass, and you take their stuff. It's all kind of the same. It, the rules should really, I don't know. Uh, we have the fishing book and the pirate cove one, but we have yet to play it. You should definitely give it a shot. It's easy to run. The PDF is great. I, that was another thing, too, is that was one of the first games I'd seen. Their PDF was very awesome in how it was super hyperlinked. Even in the maps, you know, you can click on a, a room in a map and it take you straight there. I was like, oh, that's cool. Crunch is great, but you need a group that wants crunch. Exactly. And that's the thing is that I've got games that are super crunchy. And I look around and I'm seeing people on their phone. They won't even crack the book. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, it, it, and it's a difference of time. I'm 45 years old. I got kids. got a wife. You know, and like, people have got fast, quick entertainment with their phones, iPads, and stuff like that. So the games are having to come become fast, quick entertainment. And we don't have, we've got so much stuff that we, that we enjoy now. You know, I could just go on the internet and just find a cool piece of art. When I was a kid, we didn't have that. We had tons of, we had tons of time. And we didn't have all these, video games were hard when I was a kid. Um, you know, you didn't have a bunch of art to look at. You had to actually go and buy a book or look at a book to look at fantasy art. Uh, or you had to watch, like, you know, Rankin and Bass cartoon. I know I've talked about that. Watch, like, um, Fire and Ice movies. You had to, like, look at stuff and have imagination. And now it's just so quick. But, yeah, OSR is where, is where it's at. And that's, that's another thing. I was on a stream last night just talking. Um, yeah, actually, it's funny you say that about Rollmaster. Rollmaster actually reached out to me. And they said, hey, would you mind taking a look at Rollmaster when it comes out? We'll send you a PDF. I was like, sure, it's Rollmaster. I mean, that's awesome. You know, you guys come back. That's great. Um, but I don't know what's going on with it. That was maybe maybe a year and a half ago. I told you last we spoke, I'm solo gaming, Barbarians of the Ruined Earth, Black Hack is great for me. Yeah, Black Hack, man. I was really impressed when I started looking at it. And I was like, I, li I like the... I like the usage die in Black Hack. That's genius. I mean, people have been using that for like arrows and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the Ice version. I of course I played Middle Earth. That's how I got. I know uh, you know the Middle Earth role playing game. Um, that's how I kind of got into the whole role master scene. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I like percentile dice, so that was easy. Um, but there's so many great games, and that's uh, what I was saying. Is I was talking in that stream last night, just in the chat. And people were talking about 5th edition and, 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 you know, fussing about it and stuff. I said, man, I got plenty of rules. I don't... The OGL and 5th edition, what they did, there's tons of D&D &D out there. If you don't want to play Wizards of the Coast D&D, &D, there's somebody else's D&D. &D. There's Black Hacks D&D. &D. There's whoever's. You've got Labyrinth Lord. You've got Merkborg. I mean, that's D&D. &D. I don't need to have to play the official one now we've gone past that and when i was younger D, D was the big game and you had other people playing stuff like role master and traveler and things like that but like we didn't have where anybody could make a game just and it would get out there so that people would play it and it was just over and over and over again these games coming out that were easy to play cheap and had pretty much the same rules of what you were doing in D, &D. so now we've got that so it's funny when D, &D does good other games do good when D and D does bad, other games do good, so it doesn't really matter. We've got the OSR, and that's how it goes. A lot of D and D DCC is a bit D and D with simplified tables more so than Rule Master. Yeah, I love DCC. I mean, obviously, that's one of my problems too with the channel is that, I mean, I do so many DCC books, but 
you know, games and, you know, adventures and whatnot. But, you know, when I try to do a video, I, I look and see how many people have done a video for it. I want to do a video for a product that people really haven't seen. I know I could get more subscribers if I went and picked up some fifth edition book. And that's not really the goal. I'm ready to try some DCC Funnel Dungeons. Man, I tell you, DCC is a blast. I went to the convention. I went to Mace in Charlotte. I know I did a little video about that. And I sat in on some people playing DCC. Well, it was really Weird Frontiers. But the whole DCC funnel mentality. And I tried to tell them how it is and how different it is. The, the funnel mentality. And uh, it's a blast. Because they're just not used to that. They're not used to... You know, if let's say you've got four characters. You're like, whoa. But they're easy to manage. You can give life to each of them. And then it's okay if they die. There's power in numbers. You just you do stuff differently when you when you're in that mentality where you can die. You got one, two, three hit points. Hey, I'm new to the channel. What is DCC? That's yeah, Dungeon Crawl Classics. I did a video on it too. It's one of my one of my first videos. If you if you check down, um, and it got a bunch of good hits on that. But people really enjoyed the video because I really kind of broke down more the mentality of DCC. Um, I prefer watching content that I'm less familiar with. I don't really care about DND video. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I want I want people. Like, I've got something right here. This guy, Levi Combs, he's going to be... He, I've done some videos on him. He's got this right here. It's called Big Eye Chungus, and it's for DCC, I believe. And uh, I'm going to be doing an interview with him, but, like, this guy needs his product to be out there so people can see it. Like, some of these other things, too, I'm like, no one's doing videos on this to tell people about these products if they're interested in learning about it. So I want to be kind of the more third-party, independent-type stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, the PX guy, Levi, he's going to be on there. He's going to be on this. He's going to be my first kind of interview. Um, and maybe I'll have a uh, zero theory on the, the show. If he, <laughs> on that show, I should say on the channel. Um, so yeah, DCC RPG is just a blast. I got it right here. This is my, they put out a bunch of covers. That's kind of their thing too. But this right here is my favorite cover that they did. Kind of the, the fiery wizard cover. Um, I was a I was a D and D three point five and four E person. I just cannot get into fifty for life of me. I played a couple fifth edition. It was very wordy, like it just had a bunch of words. I didn't really care for the art. The, the art was technically good. It just didn't inspire me. Um, and at one time I played it. Somebody had us play it like twelfth level. I had no clue how to play my character. There was just all this stuff. Oh yeah, this this is a this is a fantastic cover. And this is out of print now. This cover, um, and that's one of the things they don't they don't put out any splat books for DCC. They let the third party take care of it. But watch that video. And I think that'll help you. There's other DCC videos, of course, too. But um, gorgeous art definitely harkens back to, um, you know, the old school D and D. You got a Peter Mullen <clears throat> right there. He's a great artist. You've got some Jeff Easley. So you got your second edition D and D. I went from D&D 3.5 to Pathfinder, never played 4E or 5E. Uh, yeah, this is a great cover, man. I really enjoy this. Here's William McLaughlin. I've actually got some of his art up on my wall since I, I I became friends with him. And he gave me some pieces that are just astounding for DCC. I actually have a piece in the book, which I was so happy to get, that's in the book. But, um, yeah, beautiful book. Really fun. Five years lame to me, but I'm no longer the target audience, which is fine. Exactly. And that's exactly it, too. Is Look, if at some point, at some point, these companies are going to change, and they're not going to take you along with them all the time. They're going to look for new people. It's not your game anymore, possibly. But um, I played 3. Point, I played I played every edition, pretty much. I played 3.5. I got 3rd edition, which 3rd edition... <laughs> Was cool book the player's handbook. They gave you they gave you monsters in the back of 3.0. They gave you a character creation disc in the back. Like it was actually a really cool book. And uh, they of course took that stuff out for 3.5. And I didn't understand why they went to 3.5. But I played 3.5. I enjoyed 3.5. I didn't get into all the splat books and stuff like that. Um, I played fourth edition and I thought it was cool when I first played. It. I was like, wow, this is really neat. But then I realized there was no death. There was no Nothing scared me. I, I could look at the board and, and then go, hmm, well, this will take us probably two hours to beat this encounter, and we should be all right, but it'll be tough. And that's it. There was no, there was nothing that scared me. Um, and then I played 5th edition, and 
Yeah, 3.5. So, and that's how Pathfinder was. I played Pathfinder 2. And we had some fights that went on like hours and hours when they got up higher in level. With all the feats and stuff. And sometimes Pathfinder, the characters were so built so well. I had to play the monster extremely lethal. If I didn't, like 18 arrows would go into the creature's face and it would just get killed instantly. And I was like, what the hell? So I had to play them. If they've got an ability that lets them do something, use that during ability as much as you can. Like, play against the characters. I didn't really enjoy that too much. But no, 3.5, 3 I understand people's love for it. It's definitely a cool game. Um, but 5th edition was... It was a lot of me looking at my character sheet. I was like, okay, um, well, okay, so... Okay, when that happens, this happens. And whenever I heal... Whenever I rest, I can get these type spells back if I cast one of those spells. It, it just seemed like a bunch of like, uh, 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 and I was, it's a fine game. I mean, uh, more power to them. Uh, it's not my type of, it's not my type of book. It doesn't inspire me the way it looks. Um, and it's very wordy, like I said. Um, I thought it was laid out very oddly too. Um and then, like I said, I should never have played a 12th level mage. I played, I played like a 12th level mage. Here, here's a character sheet that's 12th level, level mage. I was lost. I was like, I had cards. The guy had given me cards. I was like, okay, so these type spells here, if I cast those, I get to regenerate and get one of these back whenever I rest. Oh, yeah. I have an entire shelf of two or shelf of three point. Yeah. I tell you, a lot of people love, three, that's the thing you'll find, is you'll find people that love first edition D&D, love second edition D&D, love third edition D&D, fourth edition D is, ugh. And then, of course, you got 5th edition. Um, my, I couldn't imagine being handled a 12th level mage out of the book. Yeah, it was nuts. I was like, what, what do I do with this thing? I mean, I could figure it out, of course. But it looked like I was looking at my character sheet all the time. And then I started talking to some 5e players. Now, this is not representative of all of them. And it was that same kind of Pathfinder thing. It was like, well, if I get this feed at ninth level, and then all of a sudden, if I can do this... And once my skills gets up to here, I'll be able to take two shots and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, God dang. I was like, what is your character like? Oh, he's got these feats and he can take this down. I was like, okay, well, you, you, your character is, it's a video game character that can shoot a bunch of arrows and kill something. Uh, I do two square peg. I have a friend who loves it in my group. Yeah, the game account, he burnt me out on that stuff. Just playing my own character, not running games. BX is my first girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, dude. Cool stuff, man. I played a lot of Labyrinth Lord. Honestly, that's how I got introduced into the OSR with some guys online. What happened to me was I got tired of trying to play with my friends and forcing them to like the games that I like. And I decided to go out. I got on Twitter. I got on Google Plus, And I found people that wanted to that already wanted to play the games that I play or wanted to play. And then I had, and it was the best thing I ever did. And they introduced me to Labyrinth Lord. And that's how I got into OSR. And then it was on from there. I made great people on Google+. Plus. I was able to get into writing, actually, for uh, uh, Outland Arts, for the Mutant Epoch. And then I was able to talk to people who was actually making books and playtest stuff. I playtest stuff from, like, Germany with Dungeon Slayers. I playtest stuff for, like, Pete Spawn with his Labyrinth Lord stuff, as well as his Operation White Box stuff. It was just fantastic. It was nothing but good stuff. Break out of your mold and just find the people that want to play the same games as you. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just how it has to go. Um, it was twisting arms to get people away from fantasy into, I tell you, dude, that's another thing too. Operation white box is great. I got it right here. Um, actually I think it's back there. If you like world war two and you've got a lot of great options, watch my video. If you haven't watched it, um, because it's got a lot of cool settings, like micro settings. If you want to add like the strange, weird, the occult, into World War II, but I've played a bunch with Pete, and we worked on a lot of stuff for it. Um, oh, cool! It's it's a it's it's a really good game. It's it's. I told Pete, I said, Pete, man, I don't need to buy another World War II game. This has got the small enough type of rules that I can play World War II games, and it's got the feel of actual historic World War II. It's not just kind of like some skin. Um, but I've had the worst. I've had a lot of problems, even with close close friends. They just love fantasy. They love D&D. &D, and it's very hard to break them out of the mold. And see, for me, I like learning new systems. A lot of people don't like learning new systems. I like learning new systems. I like seeing exactly how does this game tick? Like, how does it work? And I'm not a, a min-maxer whatsoever. I, I don't care about I don't care about balance. 
I saw somebody's, um, when 4th edition came out and it was getting a lot of heat, um, and somebody in their signature on a forum said, I don't care about balance. Perseus wasn't balanced against the Medusa. He was better than the Medusa. And that was 100% my mentality. I don't care about balance. Uh, now, granted, you don't have something that's ridiculously overpowered that somebody can choose, but it's just not part of my, really, equation. Role player, character. If your character's a big, bad dude, he's got a lot of muscles, well, maybe somebody's going to try to take him down because he's a big, muscly dude. Or maybe some slave traders are going to try to kidnap him, use him in some sort of gladiator pit. We're, we're breaking out and running uh, Retroploitation, which I have right back there, uh, while playing Vendra's Chalt, which I have right there. Dolomite meets Heavy Metal. That's awesome. Dolomite's right there. That's great, man. Uh, I love it. Um, Chalt's very interesting. Retroploitation's awesome. Uh, that There's a rule set for that. Yeah, I love learning new systems. I have the old Decipher Star Trek RPG. I had that as well. I did get rid of it just because I had no one to play it with. Um, Lord of the Rings, The One Ring, I had that as well. Same thing. I just got had a bunch of games that was like, these are all fantasy games or, you know, science fiction games. And I didn't, I just knew, I was like, look, I got to start narrowing this down. I got to start pinpointing exactly what I like to play and get those games. And that's what I did with second edition D&D. I let players do what they want. If they want to min max, they can. But I remember the mins and be sure to throw those in for challenge. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. Um, I mean, it It also matters how deadly your game is, the, the, even in just the basic rules. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a min max or if you can save versus death, you know, you're done. I think Dark Sun was my favorite setting because it broke the Tolkien fantasy mold. I've got Dark Sun back down there on the bottom. My buddy... Couldn't believe it. He, I didn't ever. I never had Dark Sun. I was ignorant about some si systems. I mean, some settings back in the day. I was a big Ravenloft fan. I liked Dragonlance because I read the books. Um, but I never got into Dragon, uh, a Dark Sun. And my my buddy, all of a sudden for like Christmas, I thought you know he's gonna get me like I don't know some sort of I don't know a T-shirt, a you know kind of a generic book that would help you run role playing games or whatever. All of a sudden I open it up, original box set of Dark Sun. With like that Dragon King's book blew me away. Couldn't believe it. He did that like maybe two or three years ago. I was like, dude, this is like one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. So I read Dark Sun. I was like, oh, I was so wrong about this setting. Because like back in the day, I was like, oh, you, you start off. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, I, I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was speechless. And it was a really good version of the, I mean, a really good, the box was in great shape. It also had a couple of Dragon magazines that had the, the Dark Sun in there, like Dark Sun articles. Um, oh yeah, man, he's, he's awesome. And so I was really ignorant about Dark Sun because it was like, oh, you start off at like second level. Ooh, this is pretentious trash. Oh, it's so deadly, you know, and, uh, oh, you're just on a desert. Uh, I was just very kind of stupid. And then I didn't realize how cool this, this setting. And then I didn't like psionics either. I was like, you got a guy like Dritz who can like just be taken down immediately from like a mental attack and he's such a pimp and he can kill whatever, you know, comes at him. I was like, Oh, that's just, you, know, you walk up to a plant and you're like, Hey, here's a plant. It kills you with its brain. You know, I was like, that's dumb. And man, I was wrong. And sometimes I think after you've played for a long time, I think, I think it's good to kind of reflect and be like, you know what? I was stupid back then. Yeah. Weapons made of wood and bone. Love, always breaking great struggle game. And that's the thing too. I love survival stuff now. So that's harshing it out. And that's the one thing that second edition did very well. Some people say like second edition is kind of like the historical D and D version because they put out a lot of historical stuff for it, but great setting settings, <clears throat> great box sets. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. Um, Sorry if I can't keep up. I know I'm rambling, but because I can talk, like, as you know, I can just ramble. My pocket fantasy group consists primarily of a, dr a dwarven cleric who's constantly drunk. That makes sense. And a fighter who is also a pillow salesman. <laughs> my pillow. My semi-serious world has been invaded by shenanigans, and it's great. Awesome, man. That's just, you know, honestly, dude, if you're playing pocket fantasy and you're having fun with it, man, that just, that brings a big smile to my face. That's just great. I mean, I hope it's been fun. I've had fun running it for people. Sonics in second edition was good, but I loved how, what's that? Uh, oh, Defilers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, once I started getting into Psionics, I was like, you know what? This is not bad. These are pretty much superheroes. They're like mental superheroes with a bunch of attacks with their brain, you know? And, uh, oh, I can ramble. I can ramble. I can go on. So if I ever, if I, I sometimes that's, that's another thing too. 
you would not believe how fast that timer goes when I make a video. <clears throat> so I know a lot of people don't like watching long videos. I know some people do like watching videos. I've seen people that do a review of a book and it's like an hour long. And I'm like, who is, is somebody really sitting? Maybe people enjoy that. I don't know. I've talked to people and they said, I don't really like it. And I can see how long people watch the videos. So I'm like, I'm trying to cram in as much information as fast as I can. But I know it's, sometimes it could be a little bit much. Shenanigans are always fun. No need to always be serious. Of course. I mean, some of the best role playing you can have sometimes is just crazy off the wall. And it's memorable. That's the thing, too. Fourth edition wasn't memorable for me. Like, I don't remember something being memorable. Oh, you, you took a second wind and you were able to beat that encounter. Okay. So when you have less, like it's like anything else, when you have less, the greater uh, accomplishments mean more. It's like playing a Dark Souls game, like we talked about last the other night. Those small little incremental great. When you had a, a plus one sword in second edition D&D, wow, oh, this is awesome. You felt like this is great. And it felt the way a magic weapon should be. Um, let's see. Uh, I would never want to go back to descending armor class. I gave them a little golf clap when they finally figured out ascending. Have you ever looked into um, target 20, Keldon, to see how that works for descending armor class? Nothing could be worse than my only video. What's wrong with it? I listen to this vids while doing other stuff. If it's a game, I'm interested in. Well, that's cool. I mean, I'm certain that people do like long videos, and it would probably help me to do longer ones. But I'm just, like I said, I can see when people check out of a video, like the average thing. Um, I think 4E tried too hard to be wild because wild was kicking heroines. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it was. And a lot of people talked about that back then. And it did seem cool. My problem was this. When you had encounter powers, and then you whiff on your roll, that pissed me off. I was like, so my guy can't do this again. Right until we get into another fight, it it didn't really make sense to me because it wasn't a magical ability. Like I've got kind of like encounter powers in pocket fantasy, but um, yeah, I was like, here I goes. Here's my daily power, three. Ugh, are you kidding me? This sucks. Like I just blew this, you know. Um, but yeah, check check out um target twenty if you ever want to help. Descending armor, armor. I mean, descending armor class. I don't have a problem with them descending armor class because I pretty much back in the day I kind of like sat down and said I'm going to understand this, and then I finally figured it out. Um, I love some of the abilities of the warlord. Yeah, uh, I played a warlord too. It was pretty cool. Had the cards and everything. I, I've always I play buffer characters now. I play healers. I love clerics. When I played a paladin, I went to um, I went to a convention. I went to Dragon Con. I played in the Pathfinder Society. I said, you know what? I'm going to make a cleric. Because people are going to need me. I want to be involved in the adventure. So I made a character that was a face character and could heal. And I got a lot of play because of that. And I just really enjoy giving other people the spotlight, giving them buffs and helping them out. So the Warlord was cool with that. I think they were going to make it virtual like they were trying. Yeah, they, they, were, they kind of shot their, their, their stuff a little early with what they were trying to do online for 4th edition. And the rest of the session takes place in three hours. So the day never flips. I understood to see in class. It just always seemed dumb to me. <laughs> I understand. I mean, it's definitely a, you know, a relic from uh, Gary's early days. Um, but Target 20 is cool. If you, if you don't know about it, pretty much, you just take their, you take their armor class and you add it. So if it's a seven armor class, you add it to your roll and you're trying to get a 20. You're always trying to target 20 with a D20. So they've got an armor class of eight. That's plus eight to your roll, plus your bonuses, trying to get a 20. <laughs> yeah, I like, I mean, Thacko, Thacko bars are good, and they obviously help you out with that. Um, but it helps with, the senior armor class and Thacko and stuff like that helps with stat blocks. And trying to keep up with who's got plus this, plus that, plus this, plus that. Uh, but yeah, check out, you can tap, tap, just type in Target 20, like Thacko or D&D, &D, and there's just a one page that tells you about it. It doesn't work perfectly for everything, but you can use it for a lot of stuff. You can even use it for saving throws and stuff like that. Um, but... It's a way that I've been telling people <clears throat> to try to transition a little bit if they still want to use this in your armor class to help people understand it. Bit of a question related to armor. Are there any rules for mass combat? Um, let me think. Are you talking about fantasy mass combat? Let me get a water while I wait. You make me think here. Um, I think Dark Albion has some mass combat. Maybe Lion and Dragon. Uh, I 
think that Operation White Box has some some mass combat rules. Yeah, I think um, Adventure Conquer King does. Uh, yeah, mass combat is a weird beast. Um, yeah, I think I think Adventure Conquer King does have that. Adventure Conquer King's got some really cool, uh, like guild stuff in it, like group stuff. Five E's art is so strange to me. It's a mix of okay art and weird art, but nothing has much atmosphere. It does inspire my yeah. You're 100 percent right. The book comes off purely about mechanics, not imagination. 100 percent right. Even Pathfinder with their cool art style with that that guy they've got that did a lot of the covers. It was neat. It looked cool. Yeah, the rules compendium. I, it's going to have that for you. And of course, that's where TSR and them were working on a lot of like their standalone battle system type games for mass combat. Um, so that that might be able to point you in the right direction. But um. Like I said, I do think that... Let me take a look real quick. I could be completely wrong. Who knows? There's so many books, too. That's another thing. You kind of get your mind kind of... Blue. Oh, uh, Dark Albion has, like, pitting different factions against themselves in, like, a... Uh, or is it maybe a Lion and a Dragon? That's another problem too, was when I had all those books, I couldn't keep track of what, what was what. Dang, couldn't even get this out of the shell. Let's see, uh, the OSR, okay, the, good, cool, we'll look into that, thank you everyone. Yeah, no problem, um... Are you, you bouncing out there, square peg? No art is going to be Elmore and Parkinson and Caldwell. <laughs> Caldwell's awesome. Them friggin' big old gems that Mug drew. I always loved looking at his big old gems. I can't remember if this has got mass combat. I need, to, I need to brush up. That's what I need to do. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah Elmore, El, uh, Easley... Parkin, Parkinson, Caldwell. I loved Park. I mean, something about his gems. I'd be like, this mug loves huge jewels, dude. Well, I do. Uh, I do appreciate everybody um, showing up for this. Like I said, I know it's kind of impromptu, but sometimes I just I'm trying to learn how to do it more. Like this. Vid this time, I've got the. Where is it? Over here. I've got the stuff going. Um. Let's see. Easily, easily, man. Easily is the man, I tell you. Just the man. His dragons, that's one thing, too. And I talked to uh, I was able to talk to him at Gary Con. I know I talked about this the other night. But I asked him about his dragons. And he said, because to me, dragons, the best drawn they've ever been has been Easily. They were muscular. They were huge. They were intimidating. They looked like they could kick your ass. Even some of his thinnest ones, like the Black Dragon from Chronicles cover, uh, you know, Chronicles art, like, they looked amazing, and so freaking muscular, just awesome, uh, I love them, I always like, dude, your dragons are just kicking it, man, and another one of my favorite books is Monster, Monstrous Manual from 2nd Edition, that cover, with the three character, with the dragon, and the, the beholder and stuff, I used to just look at that cover, and that was a thing, and I tell you what, back in the day, and this is my old man thing, back in the day, you would just look at that cover, like, I would look at the cover of, like, Twilight 2000, the first role-playing game I ever played. I would just look at it, and I would just, it would just, my imagination would just go, you know? Um, same thing with uh, Chronicles and, like, D&D 2nd Edition, the covers of the books. I would just look at them and be like, look at that, look how good that's. I would look for every little tiny thing here and there, because that was all we had to look at. Of course, I brought, I brought those to school. In high school, I probably should have been paying more attention <laughs> to school. But, um, yeah, Easley's awesome. Yeah, twice a day. I got it right here. So this um, this box set was this was the first role playing game I, I ever played. I had a, my, my brother and some buddies of his were big into military, and they were going to the Citadel, and um, they were older, even older than my brother, and so they, anything they did, they we just thought it was awesome. But this cover here, I would just look at it. I would look at the darn automatic grenade launcher just the, the art in itself i mean love this book love this box set it was amazing 
Oh, the Riffs book, yeah. And that was the thing. That was the thing. You would just open stuff up and you would just look at it. And that was the art. That's how you got it. So you would, and I was all, I was a big sucker for maps. You know, if I open up like a new, I got like a new Dragon Lance, Dragon Lance books, I would go to that map. I read like Robert Jordan. I want to look at that map. I want to follow him along. That goes for all the way back to my Tolkien days. So like I was always about maps, always about the cover. Loved if they had art inside. Most of the times they didn't. But like I loved like Tannis from, uh, you know, um, uh, from Chronicles, from Dragonlance, and I would just look at that cover with him, and I would just be like, oh, he looks awesome. Uh, does that book have 200, 2,000 pages because it was, has 2,000 on the cover? <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's the year 2000, baby. Um, I am really looking forward to getting into the fourth edition of Twilight 2000. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been received real well. I've never played any of their games, nor that system. I would like to try it out. Um, my buddy's cousin ran Morrow Project, always wanted to to do Twilight 2000. Twilight 2000 was great, and but we died. I mean, people got their legs blown off. Um, it was nuts. I mean, high damage. I mean, that's the way it should be. I mean, it's, those games are always, you know, the uh, Games Designer Workshop. And that's some stuff I've been looking at recently is the, like, Classic Traveler. Which, of course, I've been talking about. I did that video about. Um, I never got into Cl Traveler. And that's the thing. That's the thing. When I was younger, nobody played Traveler. I, I didn't get any experience to it. And we didn't have money. We didn't have money to buy a lot of stuff at all. So, like, if we could play D&D &D with just the three main books, that's what we played with. They put out other stuff, and maybe I got Ravenloft box set or something like that. But they were much cheaper, obviously, back then. An old gamer I never played. I wanted to was Paranoia. I've never played Parano Paranoia, and I'm right there with you. Never got to play it. Never got to play Fiasco. I think that's what it's called, right? Um, never got to play Paranoia. Uh, GDW was great. Traveler was cool. I only got to play at conventions back in the early '80s. Man, you got some. You got some age on you then. You got me beat. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing too. I wish I was a little bit older. Uh, yeah, I have looked at the the Cyphus Engine RPG. It's good. It. I picked up Mongoose's first edition of of Classic Traveler. The thing I didn't like about it, I thought the art was pretty bad. It was kind of garishly. I don't know something about it. But it made a thing where I've got a version of a game that doesn't handhold me about making my character with the original Traveler, and then I've got a game that does. And it wants to create my character's background with a bunch of roles. I didn't really care for that. I was like, can I, I'd like to make that up myself. And of course, no, I, I know I can, but it was just something about that. I, I like it. I like games to be a little bit more like, I mean, look at Vampire. I don't know if you've ever played Vampire, but like, Making your character is a massive part of that game. Your character's backstory, how they became a vampire, what's their outlook about stuff now. I really like that aspect when it's like, here's a blank piece of paper, and now bring this character to life, you know? But yeah, I looked at the Cyphus engine. I got, like, the PDF of it. I know they got, like, a Kickstarter coming, I think. I don't know if it's already going or what for, like, a new version of the book. Um, yeah, Paranoia was cool. I, was, I also I played, I played one session, I think, of... Doctor Who back in the day, like one of the early versions of Doctor Who, I played like a geologist, and uh, that was the only aspect. I've played so many role-playing games. Yeah, I like to play Paranoia. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I do not like the dice role part of character genre, uh, creation in Traveler. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's you know I see it like this. Um, yeah, that was probably it. The fast of Doctor Who. The thing about the dice rolling in Traveler is, I try to say this to people like. A lot of people's, like, their direction in life didn't go the way that they thought it would. And so you pick up skills you didn't really know. Like, when I was a kid, it was like, oh, I want to be, like, a marine biologist and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it was like, my path took me on this direction. And sometimes that really wasn't what I wanted to create. So, yeah, there'll always be that problem with people saying, this just makes my character, I, I don't have control over my character. And some people won't like that. And it's very understandable. Okay, I don't even know what time it is. Let me see. Yeah, I'll, I'll still be here. Um, for sure. Uh, so that I, I definitely understand that. You know, you've got characters that you want to make them your own. Um, like you know, you, you look at a game like Vampire. I'm gonna go back to that because it has such a huge character generation thing. Is that you make everything about that character. 
there's nothing that is going to be taken out of your hands. My buddy tried to roll roll uh, up a Han Solo guy and ended up super specialized in bureaucracy. <laughs> Well, you know, with that right there, you've just got to talk to your game master and be like, look, this is the guy, guy I want to play. Can I? Let's work through this and let's pick the skills that would make Han Solo. You know, that's another thing, too. I'm a big raw guy to a degree, um, but I always push people to do. Uh, yeah, she does sound like a rhino. Her, her snoring is incredible. I can I can hear it in here. I'm surprised you guys don't hear it. Uh, but yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> uh but um <laughs> she threw me for a loop with that one uh i tell people though if it's make it your game even though i might not live by those rules sometimes myself like i like raw as much as i can um and it's probably because i dabble in a lot of games so i think if there was a game that i've been playing like i love you know you hear about these people that we've been playing first edition for 30 years the same campaign you know it's like Oh wow, that's that's the goal for some people to have. Then sure, make the game your own. Because I know a lot of people have taken second edition; they've really made it their own. Um, but I've not. I've got a bit of a attention problem with trying out other games, and so I haven't been able to really get something long term. I mean, I have. I played Deadlands for a real long time. Um, we played. We played Pathfinder for a, a real good long time. That was a great stuff there. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, but it did. It did have long combats, man. Oh, God. I played 3.5. I was playing. We were in the... I don't know if we were in the Underdark or something. We played. We fought against Umber Hulks. And my buddy was running it. He kept on throwing Umber Hulks at us. And every time he'd throw one, I was like, God dang, you're adding another hour to this game. 30 minutes to this game. I go with what I roll. If, he, if he's a goof, then I run it. Yeah, I, I play that a lot, too. You would be surprised how fun that is. And that's definitely very much the DCC RPG mentality. Is just play with what you got. A lot of people don't... They're, they're used to their character being protecting their character and oh i've got good stats so i'll go use that character and i tell people whoa because we had some people at that convention playing weird frontiers which is dcc pretty much with the wild you know weird west i was like no 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 use your character that sucks let him go die you know say that he has like a, a you know he's got full of adrenaline and he runs in there to try to find out keep the character that's you hope to survive it keep him in the back let him be your star um yeah, that's cool yeah gong farmer from hell um so it's a definitely a different type of mentality whenever you're messing with that so with dcc but that's really very much like oh my my guy's got an 18 strength awesome or 17 16 that's incredible and then his personality is four <laughs> you know and but then you have fun with that you just go with that but when it comes to traveler or like trying to make your han solo character I would tell you, of course, to play D6 Star Wars if you're going to try to play a Han Solo character. That's, you're going to be able to definitely make it with that. But if you're playing with Traveler and you want to make a Han Solo character, you got to work with your player. Be like, look, your game master. Total side note, but did you know that if you have a damage book and you contact Runs with the Coast, they will send you a new one. I have a bunch of damage three books. Wow, I didn't know that. They'll give you some old books? Wow, that's crazy. I know they've got it print on demand now. DC is a game balance through randomization. Yes. Yeah, give it a shot. Um, well, this the, the DCC was not without its faults. Okay, so in playing it for as long as I have and mess with it, here's the here's my views of the faults. Um, the cleric is woefully not desired to be played by many carrot players. Now I'll play it because I know a lot of people won't play it. Uh, it's a push your luck class, which is difficult to play sometimes it bites you in the ass when you're just trying to help people. I wish that they had given as much love to the cleric as they had the wizard. That's probably one of the beefs I have, my main beef with it, ultimately. Um, but in the in the beginning of DCC, I think a lot of people were just focused on funnels, and we got so tired of funnels that we were just like, oh, we're just making a first level character. Let's try to get out of this, you know, um, because it was like, oh, here's a new funnel. Let's play that. Here's a new funnel. And then we didn't do anything more with that. So, uh, yeah, those are, and that's not the game's fault though. That's players' faults because they enjoy the funnel and something new. So of course you're going to try the new thing out. Everything else is kind of like, oh, okay, well now we're playing an actual role play game. I can understand. Um, uh, let's see, not sure about 3.5, but modern stuff. Yeah, they do that. Um, 
Wizards are so fun. Uh, Wizards are fun in DC. I gotta escape. Good to see you. Oh yeah, thanks for stopping by. Really, I appreciate it. Um, I'll be doing more of these whenever I've just got the time at night. I'm gonna try to give people a little bit more heads up notice. But thanks for stopping by, and uh, hope to see you in the next one. So awesome. Uh, but yeah, not DCC's neat. See ya. The series, well, yeah. Yeah, keep an eye out. And I'll try to, like I said, I'll try to get more of a heads up next time. Um, I got a little bit of a heads up this time, but I, I'm trying to get out there more. And I like talking, as you can hear, because I can keep my voice, I guess. Let's see what else is happening. Yeah, mom fell asleep and she sounds like a rhino. Sorry if I messed up the stream. You didn't mess up the stream. You're fine. Uh, all right, what else? Um... You see, do you have a Discord or something similar? Uh, I've I thought I thought I had one for Pocket Fantasy. I don't know if it still is out there. I'll have to double check. I'll have to double check on that. But I I, I mean I'm on Discord, um, or I have been. I do talk to people, uh, on there. Uh, but I, like I said, I think I made one for Pocket Fantasy, but just wasn't able to push it, uh, get people really on there. But um, I probably should. With Pocket Space coming out, like I said, Pocket Space coming out probably Monday. Not 100% sure about that. I've got to get out two more preview vid videos. I kind of bunched myself up here at the end. And I want to try to get out on Cyber Monday. I figured some people maybe would try to look online. Because I don't want it to go on Drive -Thru RPG to go, I guess it would be from here. It go, whoop, and it just disappears and nobody sees it. But that could hop, yeah. So Pocket Space is my new game because um, I made Pocket Fantasy and it's the new game I've been working on. And let me see. It's right here. It is five pages front and back. If you've never seen my Pocket Fantasy, you'll know that this looks pretty much just like it. Um, and I've done some preview videos on my channel. You can start checking out uh, those. I've got a couple more to put up. I put up one today. Uh, so pocket fantasy and pocket space were pretty much therefore when someone cancels and you still want to play a game or you want to play a role-playing game, but you don't want to get heavily invested in teaching someone a new system, uh, as it only uses one D six. I've got, I've made everything I've made for pocket fantasy. I've done a video about, so you can find it in my channel. Um, because I want to make sure that, you know, people understand. I think when you write something on the title page of draft or RPG, you just, you, there's no, you don't feel the passion. I want people to feel the passion for what I've tried to do, but this has got everything you need pretty much, um, to be able to play space games, sci-fi, starship, star Trek, or firefly, star Wars, Battlestar uh, Galactica, whatever you can think of. Um, it's not gonna have everything. You're the pockets, the pocket master, as I call him, is going to have to try to create worlds, create systems. Um, you know, there are a lot of randomizers in it as well to help you generate some stuff. It's going to need a little bit more hand holding. I would tell you if you haven't checked out Pocket Fantasy, uh, Pocket Spa, uh, Pocket Fantasy, check Pocket Fantasy out first because it's fantasy, you know what that's about, and it's been downloaded so many times and it's gotten great praise and which is just amazing. It's a free game. Everything in the base thing for Pocket Fantasy is free. Um and it's easy to print. That's another thing, too. I could have done some more fancy... I finally got some AI-generated art in this, but it doesn't take up much space. Um, but I wanted something that was easy to print. So I I made Pocket Fantasy as a player that didn't want to spend my printer ink. That was one of my beefs I had, too. I was like, I just want something that you can grab, fold up, put in your backpack. If somebody cancels, Pocket Fantasy shows up. You use a D6, and it's for a fun night of adventure. It's got things that can help you generate the adventure and, uh, you know, inspire you. And that's what Pocket Fantasy has been. Um, I've been told I should have probably charged for it, but I simply wanted people to play the game. That was all I ever really wanted to do with it. So Pocket Space, uh, I will be charging for that just because I've spent so much time, but it's going to be a dollar. Um, but... It's been a blast to mess with, but it's really been, it's been a real headache. But, um, because there's so many more systems when it comes to space. I mean, fantasy is easy. Oh, it's an orc. I know what that is. Okay, pocket space. Well, it's a Chlorgon. What the hell is a Chlorgon? I don't know. Well, now I've got to tell you how you can make a Chlorgon up or give you the, the tools you need to create your own Chlorgon, whatever that is. Um, 
So that's that's the difficulty in Pocket Space. Then you've got Starship Combat, and that's always been a beef. But um, yeah, check out Pocket Fantasy. Like I said, it's a free game to download. And there's 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 uh, pay what you want stuff, more classes, more races. And then I've got a couple of adventures. I got three adventures that are like two bucks a piece that um that I stole Merkborg's design for adventure and just put it into my game because their their way of giving you great uh, senses, touching on the senses of smell, sight, hearing for each room, the way they did that and the exits out of room is genius and it's pretty much uh, the go-to in my opinion for adventure layout right now. I know a lot of people really enjoy that so I just said I'm taking it. So yeah, check out Pocket Fantasy and then Pocket Space I hopefully will be out Saturday uh, Monday, sorry. Um, what else? What else you guys uh, I said I like I said, I wish there was a way that y'all could talk if y'all wanted to. You could hit a button and say something. Of course, you'd probably have people being jerks, but um, just to be able to, you know, have their voice. I guess you could have, like I said, something on Discord or something like that to do it. But uh, I don't know what's I don't know what's coming down the pipe for DCC. I know they're going to try to do the Dying Earth. They had some problems with Dying Earth. Joe Bittman, who was working on it, he got let go. Oh, fantastic! People subscribe to my channel. Thank you. If if you guys have. My little girl's she's rooting for every subscriber, you know. Um and really it's just Yeah, this is this is my life, man. You know, role playing games been such a big part of my life. Uh and fantasy, you know. I think you know, it's just I think about it all the time. So anything else? Uh Square Peg, what what do you what do you play? Like what type of games? Uh, are you older, younger? Um, how did you get started in, in role-playing games? Let me see. Zero Theory is going to come back, so we'll wait. Um, hopefully he'll show up. But, um, yeah, anybody that's watching this stream, like, later on as, as it goes up. Um, no, he said he was going to be back. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll show up at night, talk about whatever, don't really have any, any focus. If you want to talk about movies or video games or board games, card games, uh, whatever. I've got a, someone has asked for a fourth of my obscure sword and sorcery videos. So I'll be having, I'll be working on that. Um, that'll probably be out next month. I would say probably within the next couple weeks in December. Um, so I'm looking forward to those. Those are always fun to make. Uh, it get a lot. It gets a lot of hits. And uh, I actually had someone say they wanted me to redo a video because the video quality was so poor. I was like, I can't, I can't rebottle that magic of that video. Come on now, that thing was set in stone. I'm sorry, it looks like trash. Like I filmed it on a potato, but that's what I had at the time, you know. So we'll just chill. Let's see. Let's see what else I got around here. This big eyed chungus looks cool though. I'm interested in, in having that interview with Levi. Hopefully he'll watch this video. I've got this uh for those that might be watching later, I'll be talking about this down the road. These are older, they've been done some videos of them, but I've got them. Um so I'll do videos on them through uh Old Tan's door, these different zines. They're really good quality. They got some Russ Nicholson art in them. What? Look, hi, it's me, Chloe. <laughs> oh, Chloe. And then I showed this off at one point. The Hangman's Garden. I've got that. That's pretty cool. It's got some neat cards and a patch. And then I have all the adventures. These will be coming up too. All the adventures from uh, for Weird Frontiers. That's five of them. Awesome art, as you can see. I'll be doing videos on these. I'll try to span those out. That's one of my favorites right there. Look at that. Never Swallow the Worm. Uh, just cool, cool adventures. So I've got that. And then I've got that cyber, that cyborg video I've got to do. Too Fast to Live. Too Young to Die. God, I keep putting stuff right here. Get away. Life is like a wheel. Sooner or later, you die. 
like this, the speedometer goes up to 666, 240 and then 666. That's the number of the beast, by the way. It's not 667, the neighbor across the street. So, um, I had to step away real quick. No problem. No problem. I don't know if you heard me, but, um, are you, are you older, younger? Like, how did you get into role-playing games? Um, like what was your first role-playing game? Stuff like that. Like whatever you want to talk about. What got you into fantasy? If you like fantasy, like for me, it was like heavy metal, Rankin and Bass, Hobbit, Clash of the Titans, any Ray Harryhausen movie, um, fighting fantasy books, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, um, Chronicles, the Dragonlance novels. So any of those, like all those fantasy, Kroll, I loved Kroll when I was a kid. Um, Willow, as, it got, as I got older, Willow to this day, and I'll probably say this m multiple times in these streams, in my opinion, Willow has the best camping scene I've ever seen uh, when um, uh, they're all, they're taking, they've left their their village and they're they're having a little food and some music. It's awesome. The first RPG was D&D 3.5. One kid in my class reads in a book about the Hobbit. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Hobbit's good stuff. Um, have you played uh, a lot of, branched out and done more genres like space or post-apocalyptic, horror, um, supernatural stuff, urban stuff, um, historical. There's so many different types, you know. Uh, I love post-apocalyptic stuff. Let me get some water. Listen, that thing sounds like a... Some people say I sound like, like Vader or something. Some, some great books. I've really had to pare it down, though. It, it was wild, all the books I had. It was just too much. That whole shelf over there used to be nothing, pretty much, but OSR. And all sorts of different other books. Call of Cthulhu. Um, God, I mean, like, second edition World of Darkness books. Uh, just crazy amount of stuff. Uh, I have been meaning to, to, but I just haven't been able to. Time and other things tend to get in the way. I understand. It's tough. It's a tough hobby. That's what I tell people. Like People, they'll sometimes kind of uh, have a little bitch ses session with me about role-playing games. I'm like, man, it's a tough hobby. I said, we've got so much other stuff going on. As we get older, we get bigger families. We get more responsibilities. Um, other entertainment is now readily accessible um, and quick and easy to digest. Role-playing is a commitment. It's a commitment of time brain power, getting people involved, getting the right people involved that also want to expend that same type of brain power and get into the game. It's, I don't know of another hobby that is not like a physical hobby where you have to be really good at it, like, you know, a sport or something like that. But like, you know, stamp collecting, you just try to find stamps, right? But you don't have to really require on it anybody else. This is a hobby that requires other people to have the same passion. So it's difficult. Um, Time constraints. Roll twenty was cool. I'm trying not to vomit here. Um, roll twenty was cool when I first started doing that uh, because we were all into the game. We weren't goofing off. We 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 were able to sit in our you know in our own houses and go get a drink when we wanted to, and we had cool maps being shown. So like virtual tabletop stuff is definitely cool. It'll never. It'll never top in my opinion face to face there's always going to be something about that but it's a darn good alternative and we played that even way before covid and all that stuff uh, I, lo I logged in tons of hours um it was a blast it got to meet people from all over uh not only america but around the world uh playing role-playing games so that's a good way to try to branch out and try some other genres but um I don't know which ones you might be more interested in than others. I would tell you to look at post-apocalyptic games. If you can look at my channel, you can tell I obviously like a lot of those. Yeah, hopefully um, Zero Theory will come back soon. Uh, I don't want to bail out if uh, is this is going a little long here. And it's already 10 o'clock. 
That girl probably needs to go to bed. You hear that? Roblox girl? I'm certain you're going to chime in. But yeah, um, if you haven't been able to do a different genre and you want to check out Pocket Fantasy, let you know what it's going to kind of be like. Uh, check out Pocket Space. That'll be a good introduction to maybe a different genre with space, with a D6, easy for kids, easy for new players, and easy and actually good for older players too. I tried to get into urban fantasy, but not tried post-apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic is awesome, I tell you. Um, the thing about post-apocalyptic games is that, and I've, I've, I've said that before in some of my videos, you know, I've seen players happy that they found a jar of peanut butter hey what's up Chris that's cool thanks for joining the the stream hero kids is a great RPG for families definitely so it's definitely a big one um, I would tell people of course to try out my pocket fantasy game since it's free and it doesn't have uh, stats for kids to have to mess with um, but yeah hero kids is definitely one of the big ones out there and that game I just showed uh, that life in the fantasy world is also very cool too for kids but yeah I mean with post apocalyptic games I've had people literally like my players be like oh wow we got a jar of peanut butter and it was you know it wasn't damaged it wasn't ruined it was still like good peanut butter somehow through some ability hey Minnesota's cool gotta be cold up there I'm certain I've been up there before for uh I got laid over there or something I don't know it was a disaster of a flight but, um, yes, thanks for showing up to the, the stream here. Um, I, I tell you, post apocalyptic games are just great because it's like, you know what it is, or you're trying to figure out what it is. It's something that you know as a player. Your character might not know what it is at all. And then the unexpected is around every turn. You know that in a fantasy world, you might come across a goblin, an orc, an ogre, a troll, whatever. But in post apocalyptic, anything goes. And everything you can think of all of a sudden becomes a life or death struggle of survival. Picking up this, picking up this jar, picking up these. You get a you get a jar of marbles and you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. What we can do with it? We can trade these. We can trade that peanut butter. You know, is this vehicle working? It's like it brings you back down to that survival instinct that a lot of a lot of fantasy games don't have anymore. Um, I see we say hello from yeah, hello from Minnesota. I'm still hoping to get into a game of MCC someday. The OSR has so much. How'd you become How'd you become from RPG games to peanut butter? Hey, they're in the game. You know, they're in post apocalyptic games with, with whatever you can find. I actually had some bottles of Coca-Cola that were also in uh, this game. Because um, it was uh, it's rag a day after Ragnarok, so it's kind of like 1950s Conan. Um, and uh, they found like some unbroken bottles of co Coke. And it was like a big deal. They're like, we can trade these. We can drink these. This is amazing. And they were like staying in a... They were staying in like a turned over boat... Uh, for like shelter. I don't know. It just it, you're just you're living. You're surviving in post apocalyptic games. Um, MCC is interesting. Um, there's some. MCC wasn't received very well by a lot of people. A lot of people think that the classes are kind of busted in it. Um. But it that's where I think a lot of that balance type stuff comes into play. If you care about balance, then you may have a problem with it. Uh. There are probably some other like Gamma World type games that maybe do some stuff better, I think, than MCC. And I think people thought that they were going to be able to do DCC as well as be able to do the stuff that like Gamma World can do. Uh, so it, I don't think it got the reception that people thought it would. And of course, then Jim Wampler, who made it, got fired from Goodman Games. But um, they still got, you know, third party picking stuff out. Um, are there any OSR post apocalyptic RPGs I can look into? Yes, there is. Um, I am bummed I bought. Why are you why are you bummed about it? So this right here, Mutant Future. I've done a video about it somewhat recently. Mutant Future is a great, great OSR game. It is in essence a BX type of Labyrinth Lord post-apocalyptic game. Absolutely fantastic with a lot of really good support from third party people i've got a lot of that stuff uh this is the one i would tell you to go to there's also black hack what has one I have a video called the wasted hack that one's very cool um yeah mutant future that's definitely that's definitely the one
Let's see what else. Um, Mutant Pressure Gun. I have yet to play and want to play it, and it's not good. And if it's not now, I, I'm certain the game's fine, man. I, I oh, Mutant Future. It's a print on demand, so it's probably like twenty some bucks. I would say, like on. Uh, I'll look it up real quick. Um, Mutant Crawl Classic. Don't get me wrong. I've not played it. I've, I do videos on it. I read it. I know what the rules are like. Um, but people, some people. It's not me. Some people have a bit, a big, a bit of a beef. They were let down by some of the character classes, and I don't think that. Yeah, if you want to get the hardback, yeah, twenty eight and the softback. I just get the soft cover, honestly, unless you really, really love it and you want a hardback for eighteen forty six on a POD. Uh, that's a great one. This is a great one. If you want to try out the black hack, the wasted hack, I got a video about this one too. I was really impressed with this one. Uh, mainly because it has the black hack in it, but it, it seems like it's fun. It has, it's got some cool leveling up choices that you get to make. Um, you got the mutant, uh, epoch too, which I've worked on. It's not a D and D OGL D 20 type game, but it's definitely an older school. The way it works, it's, it's percentile, but, um, but it's a real wild gonzo game. A lot of cool stuff in it. Um, yeah, I would tell you either this, definitely Mutant Future. If you like, if you like D20 game, compatible with Labyrinth Lord, uh, some great content put out there for it. I've done several videos on some of the third-party content. Uh, God, dude, I love Logan's Run. Just love that movie. I love the TV show. Have you seen the TV show, Chris? Check out my video on... Um, what did I do that on? Dude, the TV show was great. I think it only had one stinker episode that I didn't care for. But I thought the show was awesome. I just recently watched that on Tubi, which I love Tubi, by the way. Um, yeah, I did a video. Like, I love Thunder the Barbarian. And um, you, there's a guy that did a, pretty much a his take on Thunder the Barbarian with Mutant Future. Oh, cool, man. Uh, have you seen the Planet of the Apes TV show? Yeah, I love Logan's Run. Okay, be right back. That's cool. Yeah, watch Logan's Run, Square Peck, if you're still there. Planet of the Apes TV show. Dynamite. Dynamite. I've really enjoyed that show. Uh, I've actually even got... Shit, breaking shit. The soundtrack. Soundtrack to that show is great. Yeah, Logan's Run is fantastic. And Bastille, have you seen uh, Planet of the Apes TV show? It's two discs, this soundtrack. Fantastic if you want to play Apes Victorious. That's another post-apocalyptic game. That's one I actually worked on. If um, uh, Yeah, I would love to find them on Blu-ray too. I've got the, uh, I've got the DVDs. Um, Apes Victorious. If you like Planet of the Apes, I love Planet of the Apes. Um, Apes Victorious is an OSR Planet of the Apes game and uh, I did playtesting and I tweaked a lot of stuff I made the game in my opinion and it's Dan Proctor told me this too he said I helped it because what I did was I introduced I, I, he didn't know so much about the TV show he knew, he knew about the cartoon which I like the cartoon as well He, I pretty much told him you need to have a section that lets you have talking uh, humans so that you can reproduce the TV show in Apes Victorious of apes, you talking about Apes Victorious? Let me pop out real quick. The only thing I have no problem saying this. I'm gonna tell you about a little history about Apes Victorious. So, um, Dan Proctor, I did a video about this too on my channel on Apes Victorious. So, um, Dan Proctor was on, he was on Google Plus, and he had mentioned that he was going to do Apes Victorious, he was going to do a, a Planet of the Apes OSR game, and I mentioned to him, I said, dude, you need to, do, are you going to have this, are you going to have that, like, what's going to be involved, like, I was really like, because I love Planet of the Apes, and he, um, he was like, he got up with me, and he said, well, do you want to take a look at it, and see what you think about it, because you obviously know your Planet of the Apes, and I said, well, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I, yeah, I like my Planet of the Apes. 
And so he gave me it to look at and I said, this needs to be fixed. That doesn't seem right. This does, you know, some issues I had with it. You know, I was like, Ugh. I gave him my opinion and a lot, he pretty much changed every single thing I told him to change. Um, even when it came with like starting equipment and what you needed, I'd try to, I'd try to think about what they had whenever they landed in the first Planet of the Apes movie. And then the TV show, he didn't know about the TV show. He knew more about the cartoon. So I try to say, look, man, there's a lot of good stuff from the TV show. But um, that's also an OSR post-apocalyptic game. That's It's good. It's based off of, it's his Labyrinth Lord, but he uses his Starships and, I think it's called Starships and Spaceman or Spaceman and Starships. It's kind of like his Star Trek game. Um, it's a roll low system. So it's, it's pretty much Labyrinth Lord, but you're rolling low. But Ace Victorious is very cool. Uh, it just wasn't supported very well. Um, nothing really much else came with it, even though I, people could have written stuff for it. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad that it's out there. I mean, there, you've also got, um, there's another one too. It's not a OSR game though, but there was a, there was like a Planet of the Apes type game that came out before. But this one is obviously extremely Planet of the Apes influenced. Um, because I tried to make him, like, he, I wanted him to change the astronaut. They, I wanted to be much more, I wanted to be more like the astronauts that were in the cartoon, uh, the, the TV show, where they had hobbies and they, they knew stuff that they enjoyed. I wonder if the OSR generic idea for Logan's Run would be a hit. Well, you know, um, you know, the Chalt books have got some Logan's Run stuff in it. It's got a lot of everything in it. It's wacko and crazy, but Vinger Satanis, he likes. Logan's Run as well, so he's got some stuff in there for Logan's Run. I love Logan's Run. I, if, if somebody put out a game, if so that's the thing, is that you know you get these licenses, and they're going to be put on some sort of proprietary type system, kind of like the way the, the Aliens game is, and stuff like that, but like if somebody put an OSR Logan's Run game out, oh yeah, that's purchased. I'll, I'll be buying that with US dollars. Uh, it's wacko crazy like Papa. He's definitely crazy. Um, but no, Logan's Run is great. I, I could watch that movie. I, 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 I'd probably watch that movie every year. And now I hope to, I'm glad to be able to introduce the TV show into it. Uh, because I thought the TV show was really well done. That's a shame too. The 70s, and some of the 70s sci-fi stuff is really great. Space 1999, the first season's really good. The second season's a, a real hack job, wacko thing. Um, Blake Seven. Also, I've not seen that yet, but I've, I've, uh, I think I've heard about it. I think I've seen some stuff on it. Um, '70s sci-fi man had some really cool stuff, some really cool TV shows. Uh, I think there's one that's like some some sort of arc, like space arc or star arc or something, where people are like all in this arc in space. I haven't seen that one yet, but I, I want to see it. Um, but if it's made back back in the '70s, I'm gonna check it out. I'll definitely. Oh, hey, what's up? I'm not looking at the participants, so there's always new people showing up here. Uh, I'll definitely check it out then. What is Blake Seven about? Or, like, if you can give me like a brief little sentence about it. Because now you've definitely piqued my interest. I love, like, um, uh, Buck Rogers. I used to watch a bunch of Buck, Ro Buck Rogers. Um, let's see, Space Pirates and Criminals. That sounds great. Oh, wasn't there, there was also that, um, Jason game show, like Jace star, star something, Jason. I'm, I'm having a brain fart right now. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Did you ever see that arc two? It was a future Jason of Stark, man. That's it. Um, I did watch some Jason of Stark, man. I thought it was cool. Did you, I didn't see all of it though. Cause it was like on Netflix and then they took it off. Like all those damn streaming service is good do when you've got a cool show on there and then by the time you get to watching it they've taken it off did you ever see the television show art 2 i did not it was future oh after the environment was damaged it was a large vehicle no i hadn't seen that um if it came out in the 70s it's it was probably it's probably worth a watch i'll tell you even space 1999's got kind of a wacky like setup with the moon going through space but i really dug it uh i thought it was really cool um, I really like the 70s retro futurism like aesthetic. That's one thing I really dig is and pocket space has got a little bit of that in it. I like helmets and stuff like that. I like of course I love like 
2001 A Space Odyssey and 2010, which is also a great movie, uh, but doesn't get near as much. Um, I have, I do know of, of UFO. I've not seen it. So I need to start. Well, I've got this, I've got this video now. I can see it right here. I will uh, be checking out definitely Blake seven and UFO. However, I need to find it. I'll, I'll find those things, but even like horror movies from the seventies, science fiction movies from the seventies, uh, give it to me, you know, I'll check them out. They got a lot of heart. That's the thing, man. A lot of these movies and TV shows, they just don't have the heart that they had back then. They try their best to do what they could. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely be checking those out. And I need to just buy some of these things. That's another thing, too, is these streaming services. You know, I did a video about that for, like, my obscure sword and sorcery video. And it just sucks when all of a sudden streaming services just yank it. Oh, yeah, I've got Firefly. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, I have some people around me that don't enjoy it as much. Um Britbox, okay. Yeah, the British were putting out some great science fiction back then. Uh, I like Firefly. Um, I don't think it's the be all end all, but it's like it's kind of like one of those things where what it could have been could have been really, really amazing if it could have gotten full, you know, full seasons. That would have been like more season. That'd have been awesome. The Arc Two is a six wheeled combination RV and mobile laboratory that works for me used to search for remnants of humanity in a post-apocalyptic 25th century after Earth civilization has been decimated by the wars. That's right up my alley. I gotta watch this. Do you know where I can find it? Because I... I mean, I'll watch it wherever. I don't care where it's from. I tell you, in Tubi, if you guys don't have Tubi, download Tubi, that app. Free movies, free TV shows, some of the best schlock, 80s, 70s, whatever, B-rated, science fiction, fantasy, sword and sorcery. I love Tubi. In my opinion, it's the best streaming site service out there because it's free, the commercials are not too bad, and it's got some awesome, awesome uh, schlock B-rated movies. Uh, <laughs> Firefly was great. It sucks that Disney won't be making physical versions of their... I didn't know that. I wonder why they... Uh, I mean, that's more money for them. It doesn't seem too smart. Uh... What is what again? Zero theory. My wife is devoted to the Tamara people, the original. I'm going to have to watch all this stuff. And that's the thing about Tubi. Every once in a while, there'll be one. I'm like, I've never heard of that. Oh, I do like talking to people. I talk to them all. I talk, I talk all the time as long as they be willing to hear me ramble. Um, Tubi? It's an app. And it's great. If you like 70s, 80s, 60s, whatever. Even some of the newer schlock type stuff. 2B is great. It's great for all that stuff. It's got... Like, I just watched The Phantom Planet. It's got... um, uh, Sybil Danning in it, I think it was. Uh, yeah, Pluto TV is cool. Ramble, another classic world. <laughs> I was, I like, yeah, I'm definitely ram Ramble. Um... Dark Shadows is on Tubi. I knew Dark Shadows was also on Amazon, too, for a while. I don't know if it's still on there. That's another problem, man. Some of these streaming sites, they'll just chuck it right out. Like Netflix, there was a time where Netflix had some really cool shows that were older shows that they did. They looked good. Gone. Like Jason of Star Command. Gone. Sucks. But Tubi's definitely the one if you want to go to to find some of that old stuff. And I don't think the commercials are that... Um, are that... Uh, distracting they don't they don't do too many of them classic doctor who channel on uh i like some thunderbirds as well kolchak kolchak is one that's on my list to watch um i know that was kind of an inspiration for some a lot of other shows uh i will be definitely watching that i know it's a little bit harder to kind of find i might have to find it kind of on one of those, those sites but kolchak is supposed to be very cool and i gotta get watching um, my problem is I'm spending so much time either, yeah, it's like Columbo with like, uh, monsters and aliens and stuff like that. Coaching is on tonight here in Minnesota over the air. Oh, that's awesome. Is that like a local channel or like, what is that? Like, how is that, how is that on the air? Cause that would be, that would be great to have a show that you could just tune into. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, yeah. It's the inspiration for X-Files. Um, that's another thing too is like, and I, t I say this in my obscure sword and sorcery movie, 
uh, videos is that we lost a lot of stuff when you went from VHS to DVD, DVD to Blu-ray. And like some of these things need to be put into Blu-ray. You have to go back and get them from the old stuff. Now try the Internet Archive instead of the... That's where I saw that Kolchak's on. The Internet Archive. So yes. I'm glad you reminded me of that show. So I... I I'm glad that it's... <laughs> I'm glad that you guys are talking about this. This is great. Because I need to get watching. I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I'm going to say something here that's going to... Might, might blow your minds. I'm watching the original Star Trek for the first time. The whole, going through the whole season, the whole series. I'm on like episode 26. Uh, really enjoying it. I started with Next Generation. Um, and I kind of went from there. And so Next Generation was my thing, but I'm in the middle. Like I said, I'm almost done with the first season of the original Star Trek. And of course, it's awesome. Kolchak's two movies are classic horror. Sounds great. I love it. Um, Anything you can get some cool inspiration from is always cool, uh, especially like if you want to try to do like urban horror uh, type games. I'm trying to think of what I got. I mean, X Files is great. Let's see. I love the OSR and use uh, Ostrich right now to run a group uh, of my Disney CMs in the world of Greyhawk. Great. Running Slave Pits of the Undercity. Half. Players only ever play fifth edition. So they do they like it more than fifth edition? Um, yeah, love some Star Trek. I watched all of Next Generation. I watched it. I lived in France when I was younger, and it was a show that came on that was in English uh, on the satellite we got. So I, every night I was pretty much watching Star Trek. Uh, I would have my Star Trek encyclopedia, and I'd be going through it and trying to like sync up what they were talking about with the entries. So I was just really into it. It was kind of like my escape. Uh, but, um, Over the air digital channel five point three. That's lucky. That's awesome. Well, that's great. That like have they said why they don't why they prefer it to fifth edition? That's one thing I would like to know. Uh, we use Night Shift Veterans of the Supernatural Wars RPG for seventies horror. That's I don't I've not heard of that game, but the name sounds dope. Night Shift Veterans of the Supernatural Wars. Awesome. And they are shocked how cool it is. Yes, they now prefer it to fifth, even though they still fifth. Sure. I mean that's the thing. I mean. <laughs> I'm not a cut or dry person. If one of my friends came to me and said, Brandon, I really want to play fourth edition D and D I'd be like, okay, you know, like if that's what you're driving on, let's do it. You know, let's go kill something and take its stuff. You know, like that's still the setting. Jason Bay and Timothy Brandon wrote night shift. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to have to look into that too. You guys are going to make me have to do a lot of TV watching. Um, <laughs> and check out all this stuff. They prefer it to be more open choice. They are amazed. They have so much freedom, not skill roles. Exactly. And that's all. I'm going to tell you something. This is what I think. This is my opinion here. <clears throat> Third edition is a great game. Don't get me wrong. But it also started the thing where we started chasing ability modifiers. Plus one, plus two, plus three. And we started to focus on those. And I think that's where kind of it split. It split between pure imagination of I've got these stats, but I really don't know what they do exactly, or they don't really have too much weight to them, or they have their own weight within their own categories. But now all of a sudden it was the chase, the chase for the modifier. I've got to get these modifiers up, 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 up. And it's not a mistake of the game. It's a mistake of the dungeon master, and it's a mistake of the player to sit there and allow that chase to happen. Now, it's going to happen, and that's fine. If people are still having fun, that's what it's all about. Exactly, just one more level. Once I get this level, I can get this feet and blah, 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 blah. And instead of saying that, instead they, they say that instead of saying, hey, maybe we can take over this or overthrow this, this evil warlord, and then I can all of a sudden, I want to create like my own blacksmithing store, and then let's kind of do this, and let's... You know, they started saying, and that's, it's not the fault of the game. It's the, just the, the strive for betterment. Um, I told them to look up from their character sheets and just try it and go for it. They try stuff, even if not a primary skill and they high five each other, they cheer. That's awesome. And that's definitely what I wanted with pocket fantasy is thinking about your character, thinking about what they can do 
Who are they haggling with the dungeon master, the pocket master, as I call it, and letting their imagination go wild? Uh, role plan over the role plan. Exactly. And, uh, you know, what's the word? What's the phrase I've used before? Um, rulings over rules. That's another thing, too, is trying to get away from the rules and you know, what are you playing for? Are you playing for numbers? Or are you playing for story? And I think a lot of people, they like a mixture of both. But if you're going to weigh one or the other, I think story is going to win out. So I do believe that that's kind of where the cutoff was, was chasing those ability scores. And then they incorporated that into skills. And so, you know, I was playing Pathfinder and playing third edition and stuff. And it was like, if I, every level, if I just keep putting my points into this, I can hide right out in the open practically. Nobody will see me. I've got plus 33 to stealth, you know? And it was like, but how, like what, what has created your character to be able to do that? Like, who is your character? That was another problem too. I had to start pulling out of players. Tell me about who your character is. If we want to set up a good campaign, like we're going to play a campaign of this. I need to know more than just how many arrows you can shoot per round. I need to know who your character, what their drive is. And that's why I, I gravitated to, to that games like Vampire, because that was paramount in the character creation. Uh, this is where the advice for Gary Gannett comes in. Yeah, um, Dad, do you have ever thought of making your own company? Making like RPG? Oh, I, yeah, baby, of course. Um, I get more money. Money's obviously would be nice. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, baby. They come up with so many ideas now. The other day they asked, can they create gunpowder and ask simple things like uh, can I light oil and toss it instead of looking for a skill guys there was if I'm not mistaken fourth edition has rules for climbing like walking up a ladder that's how fourth edition did like I was and that's when I was start I was like you know what this is nutty man um, yeah she looking for that college fund yeah, she definitely is I understand um, <laughs> uh, it's funny having her here it's, she's She's something else. Um, well, that's great. They're using their mind. And that's another thing, too. <clears throat> of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on telling you about my Pocket Fantasy game. I would hope you all try it out. Pocket Fantasy has freeform magic. So if you want to play a wizard, a lot of people like playing the wizard because you create the spell you want to create. Now, you may not be able to use it in combat because that could be too difficult, too, too crazy. But if you want to create something, you describe it, how long it lasts, what it does, what it looks like. And you and the pocket master haggle whether or not what the difficulty of making that role is going to be. So that's, again, another thing where you can be creative. You know, let's get the imagination out there. Uh, let the players create your campaign setting through actual play. That's always great. I mean, that's the thing is they're going to throw you for loops. And it sometimes those loops can be big, big setting, turning, you know, campaign setting changes. And not everybody's got you know, the skills to, to ride with that. And it's difficult. That's something that takes years. Another thing too about this hobby is running games. It takes years. This is not something that you people, cause I've talked to people that are like, Oh, I'm new to DM. And I'm just like, well, just, you just got to keep doing it. You just got to keep doing it over and over again. And you'll get better. Just like anything else in life, you'll get better at it. You'll feel more confident about it. Um, cause then you have like, you've got like a hurdle between like going to that to doing a convention, playing with complete strangers. So you've got to do those hurdles and you just got to keep playing and you got to want to. And you don't have to, don't worry about embarrassing yourself. You know, do crazy voices if you can. Get up and be animated. Um, so that's where it all kind of comes in. Uh, never played fourth, but heard all the hearts. Sure. I mean, it. if it had been called anything else, it would have been a fine game. It's just, you you held, it was held up to a certain standard, especially coming off of third edition. Because uh, third edition, that's the thing. Third edition has a ton of fans. I mean, they are Die hard the three three point five fans. They love that game. It's so big. Their characters are like a Swiss Army knife. They can do anything. They've got all these skills. They are beasts. And so to go from that to a game that was much more board driven, square hex, you know, square miniature, moving around, doing this, pushing and pulling. Ugh. Um. Let's see. Uh. Let's see. When done with Star Trek, check. Oh, Babylon Five. I've. I am at the last season, I think, of Babylon 5. It's a great show. I can see, um, I, I kind of foo-fooed it back in the day. I thought it looked like trash. And so I was ignorant and dumb. And it is a very cool show. Um, I also need to watch, uh, God, what's that one? Farscape. I've watched, I've started up some Farscape. 
and I love that little green dude. I can't remember his name, but he was hilarious. Um, I would check out Pocket Fantasy. I'm a game link, please, as well. Uh, sure, man. Check out my Pocket Fantasy. It's, in my, it's on my channel, too. Um, I've done a bunch of videos about Pocket Fantasy, but I'll fire you one right now. Um, and I got Pocket Space coming out this Monday, and it's been a huge... A uh, huge thing. And just to let you know, if you've got any people that are from overseas and know some friends, Pocket Fantasy has been translated into uh, Italian and German. So if you know anybody that uh, that speaks German or Italian or have friends, they can check it out too. And it's free as well in those respective languages. Um, Let's see. I'm, uh, I make sure I never tear down another person's favorite RPG. Or I don't tear them down either, man. And that's the thing about my channel is that I this is the thing. I know if I was a very negative person and start up a lot of stirred up a lot of drama, I would get more people watching my channel, um, which could open up different doors and stuff. That's just not who I am. I don't tear down stuff. I, I can see the good in a lot of stuff it, it, that people make, um, and. You gotta give it a try. You gotta at least try it out. And if it's something they're passionate about, I'll be there too. But people sometimes give me their books. I don't think it's the best, best thing, but you know what? I can see what the good is. And I think a good role player should be able to pull out a lot of cool information about and and imagination out of those products. Uh here you guys go for Pocket Fantasy. Uh with fourth E pulled the OGL for that. I think I think they I don't know what they did. I know people weren't able to make stuff for fourth edition, so you might be right. Um, I want to say yes because we did not see much third-party content for yeah. I've been a DM since 1982 and OSR is like Christmas all over again. Loving it. It's RPG. That's awesome. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that's the thing I said earlier. I don't know if you were here, but like Wizards of the Coast makes a version of D&D. &D. It's not the end-all be-all. Once they did the OGL, it's all the same stuff. Oh, I can't use the word beholder. It's not a big deal. It's We all know it's a beholder. Okay. But we're all playing different versions of rules that are D&D, &D, in my opinion. So that's their version of it. And that's great. And people love it. When D&D &D does good, other games do good. When D&D &D does bad, other games do good. So that's how it kind of goes. That's what happened with 4th edition. I make such uh, assets on tabletop simulator for RPGs. I'd be open to making the table set up for Pocket Fantasy on there if you'd like. Yeah, that's something that definitely we can discuss. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means about the assets. I mean, I know kind of. I've I've played Arkham Horror card game on there and Marvel Champions on Tabletop Simulator. That's my experience with Tabletop Simulator. Um, but my Pocket Fantasy game, check that out there, Chris. Uh, uh, if you, uh, I think that's you. I think that's you who asked about it, right? Or am I blind? Jeez, I'm having like a main, major brain fart here. Uh, the table with character sheets and dice rated, ready to go to play. Oh, awesome. That'd be great. Um, there's a lot of stuff in Pocket Fantasy. I've got cards. i got cards for everything. Cards for the monsters. Cards for locations to give you uh, adventure hooks. I've got 70-some magical items that are, most of them are all unique, like named. And that nearly killed me making those. Because um, it was just so much work, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff on there. You download it. It's all free. You'll see it. And, uh, yeah, take a look. Um, like I said, it looks basic. It's definitely one of those things. If you look at the game and you actually play it, it's very, it works really well. I mean, I, I'm going to toot my own horn to some degree. Read the reviews, you know? I mean, some of these people with their reviews have been absolutely just flattering. I had a guy just comment the other day on one of my videos and he was like, this game has just blown me away with how well it works. It works better than these other OSR like light games. I'm just I'm just amazed at how good it is. And for me, I'm just like, wow, that's you're just making my head feel fuzzy with this. You know, I'm feeling really great. I <laughs> mean man, that's awesome to hear because uh, you know, I made that thing years ago. I've spent tons of time on those four little pages. And uh, that means a lot. You know, um, it's all that's all the game ever was was and that's why I didn't charge for it at first. And people now have said that I was dumb for doing that. But, you know, at the time, I just wanted people to play it. And it's great for kids. Kids like it. They get to roll a defense roll. 
that armor class, that's one thing about kids. And this was in playtesting. They did not like just taking damage. They had nothing they could do about it. Someone else rolled a die, and they took damage. They did not care for that. They like having their fate in their own hand. And while that not, might, might not work for every game, of course it is kind of now for Merkborg type games, they like rolling a die to say, oh, I blocked that. I didn't take any damage. Yay. Uh, right, eyeballs on the game. It was so good because you made it, but if someone else tried, they would have failed because you did the best. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Um, if allowed to share to you, download it right now. What do you mean, if allowed to share to you? Don't understand what that means. There's my water bottle again. It's getting worse. I really appreciate everybody staying up. I didn't think this, this stream would go this long. But as long as people are having fun. My Facebook group has 800 members. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, please share my game. I mean, like I, see, like I said, I, I went to that convention and I had a bunch of, I had some people standing around me and I was giving them my spill. And I can tell my spill about Pocket Fantasy. And it was one that was much bigger than right now. And, and I sat there and I said, look guys, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sell you on a free game. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to sling you on anything that's, you know, some big financial thing. I mean, if you want to buy my adventures or send me some money on the pay what you want, but even the pay what you want, people wanted me to charge for. And I was like, I don't know. I just want people to play the game, you know? And I talked to some people at the convention. They were like, well, what do you want with this game? I said, well, I just want people to know that I made the game. That's all. I want them to play it, have fun with it. And for the game to do what it was when the day came when someone canceled and we wanted a game to play that we didn't have to invest much time and effort into, or we could have a new player play it, or a young player play it, if they can experience that same thing, victory. That was what I said. So tabletop board games, RPGs, and miniature games. Yes, please share the game. Like I said, it's a free game, and um, and there's a lot of content for it. People have wanted a lot more stuff out of it, and it just wasn't that scope. People have given me ideas about it, so the, the scope of the game was... And you can watch my videos about it on my channel, because I really break down my thought process behind it. They say, well, you should do this, and you should do that. I said, well, that's a little out. That's outside the scope of the game. The game was supposed to be really for one shot, a night where someone canceled, and you can still play a game. But people like everything, and of course it's flattering. They want more and more and more. Um, I played it. I ran it with people. That's how I, I, I play tested it. I got my, my friends around and we played it. And again, once again, toot my own horn. It just immediately, I could tell it worked and they were having fun and they understood the game because it's very basic and they didn't have to keep up with stats. They didn't have to keep up with all that stuff. And I used tokens to represent things and they enjoyed the mechanics of it. And the character classes felt like the character classes. So it's very it's very generic in its in what it's trying to do. It's not trying to I want if you're gonna play a quick scenario or setting or not setting adventure, I want you to do kind of the tropes of what you're going to do in an adventure. One of the best selling points about Pocket Fantasy, of course it's funny I'm saying this, and I should have said this in my video. Here's the thing about Pocket Fantasy that other games can't do. You can go from, an, in one night, you start up, you could go from playing fighting goblins to fighting a dragon. And I said this at the convention, and people were like, wow. Well, thank you, man. I really, really appreciate that. Big thanks. Um, you can go from fighting a goblin to a dragon in one night. The only thing that you need is magical weapons and armor. And I tell people, I say, if you're playing D&D, &D and you are a 20th level character, and you have a dagger and leather armor, do you think you're going to be able to fight a dragon? Most of them said no. I said, what's the difference? You need magical weapon and armor. So you will get that magical weapon and armor as you go through the game that night. So at the end of the night, you'll be fighting, if you want, dragons, griffins, giants, medusas, mummies, trolls, all the big creatures we want to fight. And everybody said, oh, that's great. And now I, then I turned it to them and I said, now get this. How many times have you ran a dragon as a dungeon master, as a game master, how many times have you run a Medusa, a mummy, a vampire? And of course, I always bring it back to the dragon. And they're like, very rarely or never. And I said, you will be able to gain the experience of running a dragon. It doesn't matter about the system as long as it's there. 
but wouldn't you like to be able to run that proficiently and know that you've run it really well, knowing that you've ran them a bunch because every time you play, you have the opportunity to say, now I'm going to run a dragon. Well, you, so zero there, you've, you've done it three times. I'll be honest, I've never, I've never ran a dragon. I've fought like small drakes, never. Um, so that's, that's the thing that I kind of push for people for pocket fantasy. The person that's running it gets something and the players get it. They get to experience it and the, the DM, the pocket master gets to get experience of running them. So I created stats for undead goblins in my ostrich game and my players freaked at the idea of undead goblins. That's cool. You can, you can do that in pocket fantasy too. Pocket fantasy uses an ability thing. It's, it's just like, you know, uh, undead is pretty much bones, the ability bones. And like, if you want skeletons and, um, undead, which is an ability and you could give them a weakness if you want. So, uh, yeah, it lets you change out what type, like you have harpies, you can have harpies that give you disease harpies that uh have can cast magic um so really again sky's the limit which with your imagination what you can do so uh that's that's one of my big selling points that i think really surprised people at the convention where they were like whoa dad on my youtube channel i put the link uh, to get pocket fancy well thanks babe appreciate that yeah i mean that's the thing i don't know of other games that are going to tell you that and say Give your players the experience of fighting a dragon and you gain the experience of running a dragon proficiently, trying out different stuff and become comfortable with running a dragon. My party TPK to a trap in the dragon's lair once, never met him. <laughs> I warned them dragons are intelligent. Oh, that's terrible. Oh man, that's poor mugs. I bet they were like, oh, here we go. Dragon, awesome. Um, I read one of the Dragon Age novels and they fight a dragon in there, and it's one of the best descriptions of a dragon fight with a group of people that I've ever read. I was just blown away by it. I can't remember the name of the book. It's like one of the very first books. But um, but yeah, uh, no one's saying that. No one out there in role-playing games are saying, as a DM, as a game master, you need the experience to run these high-level creatures. And of course, I guess you could make a 20th level character and just run it. But is there is there a progression there that's enjoyable? Possibly. I don't know. Maybe. There's no progression. But I guess you can get the experience. I think a lot of people feel it's kind of like, Ugh. like uh, did we really fight it? I guess we did. I once had my players years past try to defeat Dragon. Uh, they forgot. They fly and drop boulders from thousands of feet in the air. That'll definitely do it. You don't want to take a boulder upside the head. That's a, that's defeating. That's a negative. That's a, it's not ideal. So, well, this is crazy. I can't believe it's, I think I've, we're going on like over two hours here. This is wild. Um, I really appreciate everybody showing up for this. I didn't know, like I said, I didn't give a huge headway, but um, I, I hope, I don't know. I don't watch a bunch of streams, uh, but I know a lot of people do. And so I don't know as someone who likes to go on streams, like what they want out of the stream. I would feel that people want to be part of the discussion and have their opinions said or their two cents to be part of the discussion. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. So I'm, I'm still new to this. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I hope that's what I've provided. Um, and I'm not one, like I said, there's three ways. There's three ways to make it big on YouTube when it comes to role playing games. You talk about role, you talk about fifth edition. You tell people and do videos that say, this is the way you should be playing your game. You're playing your game wrong, and this is the way that you should play it. And third is to get into the drama, the politics of the RPG industry. I don't want to do either of the, any of those three. So as long as everybody's cool and no one's getting heated in any discussions or anything, I really just want to hear from you people, you know, like the people that watch the show or when watch the stream, like... I want you guys to be able to kind of direct the course of discussion. I stream sometimes on Twitch. I'd like to do a DM stories thing where DMs tell funny or crazy stuff that happened in the game. That's cool. It's not a bad idea. Um, you know, that's the thing too, is that role-playing games also are extremely personal. Uh, it's much more different than other games. I mean, I mean, think about it like in role-playing games, like video games. 
oh, so I did this and that to kill the boss. Oh, well, I killed it in this different way. Well, with role-playing games, you're it's it's that all the time. It's all personal. It's all you. So like funny and crazy things, um, those are all that's are all they're all personal things to, to people do. I mean, a lot of people, oh yeah, I shot the you know, in video games, I shot the creature until it died. Yeah, me too. Thumbs up, we did it. Um, but with role-playing games, you can really and the same thing with board games. I don't have I like board games. I've gotten more and more to them. They, they were always a thing where they, they, the ones I enjoyed were trying to be like a role-playing game. And so I was like, why don't I just play a role-playing game instead of playing this? Like it's trying, it's like a quasi role-playing game, but I've been enjoying more of them, but I still don't have any stories about playing a board game. Oh, remember when you went around the board, you had, you had a whole bunch of sheep and I was getting, I was getting uh, cows while you were getting sheep and boy, you really went around the tape, the, the board and you won. I mean, there's no stories like that for me. So that's why that's where uh I like historical miniatures too. I love Lion and Dragon, yes, but don't like politics, just want to play games. Agreed, because I love historical miniatures, gaming, and wanted to Yes, yes, yes. Uh Lion and Dragon is very cool. Um I uh I do watch the RPG pundit. Um I I like his products. Um I think Lion and Dragon and you can I don't know if you see my videos on them. Um the uh Dark Albion are very cool books, and it's something that it's got a cool aesthetic to it. He's got some really great ideas, but it's one of those things where I have my opinions about stuff, and I don't want to be that. That's that third thing that I just don't want to do. Um, I don't mind. I'll tell people my opinions about some stuff when it comes to like the, the game or what I think about Wizard of the Coast. I don't care for Wizard of the Coast, but it's not. It's no longer for me. So it's kind of like. You know, I, I say that kind of like the new Dune movie. I like Dune. Dune's one of my favorite movies. I like the Peter, I mean, the David Lynch movie. Um, but, like, I don't know if this new Dune movie was for me. I don't know if I can say if it was a, it was a great Dune movie. So I don't think it was really made for me. So it's like one of those things where I'm like, I don't really know if these, like, d and not really made for me. So now, like, D&D and Wizards of the Coast way. But, um, so it's kind of like that where I'm like, I've got my opinion about it, but I'm I'm not going to make it some sort of huge crusade because I think it's kind of a it's a moot point and I don't think it's, anything's going to change. Nothing's changed in those regards. But um, but those channels are out there already. You know, it's kind of like you got channels like Geeks and and Gamers, or I think it's called, or something like that. You've got like the quartering. You got these guys that you know after after a while, I was like, why am I watching this stuff? It just pissing me off it's just irritating me yeah i agree with what you're saying yeah that stuff sucks but like why do i just keep going to this thing why wow, it's so negative you know and i'm like i can't deal with it i'm the same way i think playing and tearing others down is too much in gaming these days i want to uh, get to get to have fun uh, just have have just fun i don't care what they think i think we can all just have fun and i agree I mean, yeah that's ultimately what it is am i happy about the state of a lot of things no um, I'm, I'm very much, <clears throat> I'm very much a thing of, everybody's got a spotlight, they've got a flashlight in their hand. They hate something, but they love to show it. And of course, they've got their other agendas for their YouTube channels and stuff too. Um, uh, and there's an audience for that. There's no doubt about that. And people enjoy that stuff. I think it's, a lot of it's futile though. And I went to the dentist one time and they had a sign on the wall that said, if you ignore your teeth, they'll go away. And it's been really, uh, it really kind of struck me. I was like, that really makes sense. If you ignore your teeth, they will go away. And so we love spot, sh like shining a spotlight on stuff that we hate and wish wouldn't exist. And we're giving it more weight than it deserves and giving it more credence than it deserves. So I just, I don't know. It's like one of those things where I'm like, do I want to delve into all this mudslinging and this is what sucks i'm like do i want to be like these other guys uh, i don't i could it would it would it would it, for starters it would piss people off that i went there and i'm not not wanting to do that i'm just happy that i'm happy you guys are here I and mean, this is great and i don't want to say something that all of a sudden you know somebody now drags me through the mud because of my opinion about stuff um yeah definitely oxygen to the fire so i'm like i I don't know. I'm very much kind of a realist. Uh, everything's not great. 
you know, out there in the industry. I never thought it would come to role playing game industry. It's there, but there's still avenues out there that you can enjoy and you don't have to delve into that stuff. If you don't like what Wizard of the Coast is doing, then don't give them money. It's very easy. This is capitalism. It works. You know, <laughs> it's a prime example of it. Yeah, life is too short to be miserable and angry. It, it really is. And, and I've been angry about stuff a lot. You know, I think a lot of people deal with a lot of that stuff. And I said something about that kind of in in my old Grognard video. I think it was uh, No Country for Old Grognards. You know, I, I just like Star Wars, you know, it's like, my God, I, I realized watching The Last Jedi, I'm like, this is no longer for me. You know, I was born in 77. You know, we're going on over 45 years of Star Wars. And I'm like, I don't, I'm done, you know. Um, let's see, uh, it's all in the hobbies. I am, and I ran full scale Battletech. Battletech, I play events, massive terrain for Callus Games Labs for 10 years, and the negativity was draining. Oh, God, I bet it was. But no, I've just gotten into the new boxes of, uh, I got a bunch of stuff over here. Battletech, awesome game, love it. I'm trying to re revive the fun I had in my youth, and that's why I like to play D&D. It's hard to revive the past because life has changed so much since then. Lots of friends are gone. I want to play me some Battletech again. Agreed. The new, I love the new sculpts. Awesome. I didn't play it back in the past, but I've seen the old, the old sculpts, and they're great. Uh, born in 1967, I saw Star Wars opening week. Awesome. See, you, you've got the age on you where, like, a lot of that stuff must have been very powerful for you. I was just a little bit young, even though I, I'm, I'm older. I wish I was just a couple years older because I would have probably even more enjoyed those things if uh, at my age. Um, so what you said there, I'm trying to revive my the right there. It's hard to revive the past. You're 100% right. And the reason that is, from my opinion, you can't... We it's, Okay, I showed my girl Star Wars recently, okay? They liked it. It was the special editions. I do not like the special editions. I like the theatrical version. I am a original trilogy guy. That's just me, okay? I originally wanted to show them the original trilogy. Maybe go get those, like, fan-made edits that they did that they fixed it all up. But I sat there and said, you know what? Nothing is going to make them a kid in 1980... I can't remember what year it was. Return of the Jedi. I was outside playing... And my mom drove up and she asked me and my brother if we wanted to go see Return of the Jedi. Nothing's going to replace that moment and give it and put it into her. Not only that, but the way that she has consumed entertainment. It's completely different. It's completely alien to the way that I consume stuff, be it movies and TV shows. Okay, thanks a lot there, Square Peg. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope you, uh, you come back and we can chat some more. Like I said... I want this uh, stream to be just as much as y'all's as it is for me to talk. Like I said, I wish you guys could have a voice. Um, so it's not just me here. Uh, so I really appreciate you showing up and, and contributing, you know. That's the thing. And I said, you know what, fine. I'm going to show the special editions because it's... I can't reproduce that moment. Not only can I not reproduce the moment of me as a child watching it, but the way that I had already consumed media and, cons and knew about stuff. I... I, I it's impossible unless she was given some she was born like in some sort of Truman show world so just let her see it I can't recapture that that I had I feel lucky I was able to do that and to to know that you know to to enjoy Star Wars the way it was and that's what I kind of realized with these new movies and stuff I said look this is no longer really for me I enjoy this and I'm gonna just keep enjoying what I enjoy I took my wife to her first drive-in movie two years ago, and she loved it, and she had no idea. Made old new memories. Do you remember, what, do, was it an old movie, or what type of movie was it for the drive-in movie theater? Eleven o'clock. I'm on East Coast, by the way, South Carolina, in case anybody's asking, wondering. New movie, okay. Has anybody, I asked this the other night on the stream, has anybody seen The Northman? If so, what did you think about it? I, I anticipate. I hope so. I'm looking forward to talking to somebody that's seen the movie. I haven't been able to. Uh... I know somebody from my last stream, they picked it up. After I said that, have you ever watched it? 
I love the new Battlestar Galactica. Check out the Northman if you can. I'd like to see. I'd like to hear y'all's opinion on what you think about it. Uh, I love. I love Battlestar Galactica. I've seen it twice. Um, I watched it, and then like the next year, I watched it with the wife. She loved it. Uh, awesome show. It's definitely in my top five, probably shows of all time. Uh, the Northman's a movie. It's about Vikings. It's got one of the Skarsgård, Eric Skarsgård, I think it is, in it. Uh, it just came out like uh, earlier this year, I think. Uh, Robert Eggers made it. Thank God. Oh, James Richards. Yes, we've got somebody else. Hey, thanks for showing up. Uh, and he knows about it. I loved The Northman. And the, one of the reasons I did, you could tell it was a movie of passion, of artistic passion. It was given great, great respect. And it just felt like a movie they no longer make anymore. And they used to. I loved The Northman. And there was a scene in there that was straight role-playing, awesome Skyrim badassery that I was just like, oh, this is amazing. Uh, it's out of print due to license, but Ares Games, Miniature Games, is amazing. And pre-painted Ares Games. I, that's, that sounds familiar to me. You're talking about... um. Battlestar Galactica game? Because I think I've seen that. I've got the uh, Battlestar Galactica game that they put out. Oh, no. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I've got that. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I've got a whole wall of it. I've got every single product they put out for that game. Every single one. Amazing. Love it. I didn't know exactly what you were talking about. The, um, what's it called? Uh, Starship Battles. Battlestar Galactica Starship Battles. Awesome game. Kicks X-Wing in the ass, in my opinion. The miniatures are amazing. Uh, like I said, I bought... I got everything that they ever put out for it. So, yeah. Very, very cool. We're synced up, me and you, Chris. We're synced up. Um, but yeah, check out The Northman. I was... No, uh, the Ares game is the Battlestar Galactica, and then Catalyst. They make uh, the new Battletech. I'd like to be able to show you some of the stuff I have. I've just I've got like a wall of board games here. Some people have recently just given me a board of I mean a whole wall of I mean just tons of board games. They either didn't want or for gifts or stuff like that. I'm swamped. If you'd like to get into yeah, I've got wings of I've got this. I've got I can show you this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just got this um not too long ago. Guy didn't want it. Awesome. I'm terrible at this game. I don't know. First game I played of it, I was absolute ass. I couldn't do anything. I got absolutely just destroyed. Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really hate that they lost that license for Battle Circle Galactic. It crushed me. Absolutely crushed me. I was like... It's good, but World War One is easier version of the two. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the, I guess the speed and stuff like that, and the, you know, the uh, the weapons and stuff. Um, yeah, I uh, dude. Are you on board game board game geeks on there, uh, with Battlestar Galactica? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to I'm starting to fade here on this this stream. I, I'm just I'm really appreciative. Okay, cool. Um, I made one thing for it. Like, uh, I pretty much took all the chits for the the tokens for the damage, so that people in case they lost their tokens or something. I made a thing where you can, it, it said what came in the main box set of the damage tokens. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, we're probably going to wrap it up here soon. Like I said, I'm starting to fade. Um, Legend Maker. Okay. I think mine is, might be my name. Can't even remember. Um, that's another thing too. I, I just, I, I throw my name out there. I used to have like Savage GM and stuff like that. I played a bunch of Savage Worlds, but now if you see anything out there, Brandon Geringer, that's me. Uh, well, thanks man. Um, really, I've. I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad you guys showed up. I had an awesome time. Uh, it's addicting, man. I like to be able to talk to people, tell people my opinion, hear their opinion, have them interact. Just fantastic. So this was a bunch of fun and time just flew by. I can't believe this. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be doing one of these soon too. And I've hoped to give you some more headway time. So you'll know when it's going to happen if you enjoyed it. So yeah, thank you very much for showing up everybody. And uh, you made my day resting at home recovering. Oh, I hate that, dude. My, both my folks just got COVID, man. Um, 
we'll have to throw something together to roll. Yeah, uh, we'll definitely talk. And I'll, I'll, I'll do your video. You know, like I said, your video's coming up. I can do that sometime. Uh, I'll push it. I can push it closer into the um, the docket, I guess I should say, of, of stuff I'm going to do. Um, and uh, I'll give it a good look. So it'll be one of those PDF things that I look through. Um, kind of like I just did with the uh, the latest video I did. The Time Lost Citadel for Mutant Crawl Classic. So yes, thank you very much everybody for showing up. Hope you show up to the next one. If not, maybe the, name me one down the road. You know, we're all busy, but uh, sometimes at night I don't have anything really going on. And I'm like, well, let's go see what people can do. And uh, hopefully I'll get better at getting these out there. And it's a little difficult. A little difficult to understand how this stuff all works. But thank you very much for showing up. Love hearing y'all's opinion. Uh, you get some rest. This was awesome, awesome man. I, I really appreciate it. Like I said, I, I love shooting this stuff. If you've seen movies, check out The Northman. Um, uh, I'm going to have another obscure sword and sorcery video coming out soon. I know I've talked about that in case y'all haven't seen those. Those are pretty, those were fun to make. And a lot of people really like those. Um, and, uh, yeah, you get some rest too. Uh, shoot. Um, if you're resting at home from COVID man, hope it didn't affect you too bad, but, um, yeah, this is great. So thank you very much. And, um, if anybody else has got anything, we'll go ahead and rip it out. If not, we'll, we'll close it down and, uh, I'll let you know about the next one. So thanks. Check out Pocket Fantasy. Pocket Space come out Monday if I don't stream since then, you know, before then. Um, and I'll probably do some little, I'll probably do like a little post just thank everybody for joining the stream because this has been so great. Uh, but yeah, check out the games. And um, yeah, yeah, keep chucking them dice, everybody. So have a good night. Have a good, uh, have a good Sunday. All right. All right. Take a look at it, Chris. Let me know what you think about it, okay? Thanks, y'all. Later.